I'm just going to give folks a minute to come in from the waiting room. As a reminder, when you are entering from the waiting room, please make sure that you are on mute uh, until and unless you are appearing or testifying before the board. Good morning. This is a hearing before the licensing board for the city of Boston. Today is Wednesday, January 26th, 2022. Today's hearing is being held pursuant to temporary amendments to the open meeting law. That is what allows us to meet virtually. Today's hearing will be recorded and posted to the city of Boston's website. Before I review procedural matters, I will introduce Chairwoman Kathleen Joyce. Good morning, my name is Kathleen Joyce. I'm chair of the Boston Licensing Board and today I'm joined by Commissioner Liam Curran and Commissioner Kiana Saxon. Thank you. As a reminder, you. please do mute yourself and keep yourself on mute unless and until you are appearing or testifying before the board. Uh, if you are going to be presenting before the board, please ensure that your audio and visuals are working properly. I will call each item in the order it appears on the agenda. I will then ask who is present on behalf of the applicant. You will then make a brief presentation regarding your proposal, followed by questions by the chairwoman and commissioners. Following the questions, there will be testimony beginning with elected officials or their representatives. Please limit your testimony to two minutes and please state your name, address, and affiliation, if any. We'll now be calling item number one on today's agenda. Manuel Rodriguez doing business as ADK Sandwich Shop located at 421 Bowden Street has applied for a common bachelor license to be exercised on the above first floor kitchen with takeout area. Manager Manuel Rodriguez, hours of operation 6 a.m. to 12 a.m. Who is present on behalf of the applicant? Yeah, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Manuel Rodriguez. Uh, I'm going to open the ADK sandwich shop, uh, 421 Bodio Street in Dorchester. So I go to sell sandwich, uh, coal and have juice, coffee and tea. Okay, thank you. Um, will there be any, is it takeout only or will there be tables and chairs inside? This, this, this is the, for take for takeout. Okay, there'll be no seating inside the um, sandwich shop? Mm -hmm. No, 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 no chair, no nothing. It's for takeout, okay. and that's it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and are you um, still requesting 6 a.m. to 12 a.m. for hours? Uh, yes, 6 a.m. until 12 a.m. Okay, thank you very much. I don't have any questions. Commissioner Curran or Commissioner Saxon? No questions, thank you. Not the moment, thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this item, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Now calling item number two, JAI Group LLC, doing business as El Jefe's Taqueria of BU Com Ave, located at 957 Commonwealth Avenue has applied for a common vigiler license to be exercised on the above on one floor with two levels, prep kitchen, cook line, serving line, dining room, and bathroom. Entire space is handicap accessible. Manager John Shaw, hours of operation, 8 a.m. to 4 a.m. Who is present on behalf of the applicant? John Shaw. Thank you, Mr. Shaw, you may proceed. Um, hi, thank you. Um, um, I, I'm applying for a common vigilers license at 957 um, Com Ave. Um, it's the old um, Blue State Coffee location. Um, th th that space um, was completely inaccessible. Um, there were two different elevation changes, 12 inches to get into that space, and then there was another three feet after you got into the space to get up to the serving counter. Um, it, it, it took me six months and a lot of negotiation and approximately $150,000 of additional construction funds, but I've not only made um, the El Jefe space, the blue coffee space now handicap accessible, but I've made the entire first floor of that building, including the Bank of America um, ATM space um, handicap accessible as well with the um, with with the new storefront, with the lift we're putting in at the front of the storefront, and with the ramp we're putting in, um, so the entire space has now become handicap accessible. Um, I, I'm applying for a four 
um, a 4 a.m. license. Um, this is the seventh El Jefe's Taqueria that will exist. Um, um, four of them have 4 a.m. closing times. Um, one in Northeastern has a 2 a.m. closing time. Um, the, the Harvard Square location was the original Al Jefe's. It's been open for six years. It's had a 4 a.m. closing time for that entire six years. Um, and we have not in the in the 16 years that we have um, we, we've had sort of stores open for those sort of 16 store years, we have not had one single incident um, uh, as a result of our being open late. I, I, I have a business model that where I do 30% of my business from midnight to 4 a.m. Um, and uh, um, it, it's part of, um, like I said, of, of a successful business model that we've created. Um, I locate in places where being open late doesn't interfere. Um, and it, it, it's not in residential areas. It's not in places where sort of um, where being open late uh, um, is an issue. So, um, um, I, I, um, I would just like to uh, um, um, encourage the board to, um, I, I understand that um, because I was called last night at 7 p.m. Um, by a representative from Boston University that they're not um, going to support us being open until 4 a.m. Um, we, I, I made a presentation to the Alston Civic Association earlier in the month, um, and I, I believe I had their total support, um, and I think someone will be speaking on their behalf today. Um, um, so at any rate, I just... Um, sure, can I jump in and ask you a couple of questions, Mr. Sure. Shaw? So at this location, how uh, many um, seats will you have in the dining room? Um, 25. 25 seats. And of the four locations that have a 4 a.m. license, you said Northeastern is, you said Northeastern has 2 a.m., but of the four that have 4 a.m., how many of those are actually in Boston? Um, none of those are in Boston, but one's in Harvard Square. The okay. original one is in Harvard Square. Okay, so other than the Northeastern location, um, which, what, how many locations do you have in Boston? We have one at, um, at, um, at on the corner of um, Boylston um, and Tremont, across from the Boylston Tea Stop. Um, it's in the little building at, okay. at Emerson College. Oh, Emerson. Okay. And that one is uh, what time is that close? Um, th that has a midnight closing. Okay. How long have you um, been open at the Northeastern and Emerson locations? Um, since March. Okay. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about how you got to the 2 a.m. and midnight closing there? Was that something you talked about with the community? Did they, did you request sure. 4 a.m. and then you went back to 2? Yeah, yes. Um, at, 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 at the Northeastern, um, I met with the community, with the Fenway, um, uh, um, the Fenway Community Neighborhood Association and the Symphony Neighborhood Association. Um, and um, they were proposing um, a 12, a midnight closing um, Sunday through Thursday and Friday and Saturday, 2 a.m. Um, and I then just made the request to the board to have it 2 a.m. seven days a week and, and the, licensing the licensing board approved that. Um, in the nine months since we've been open, once again, there has not been a single issue. Um, I'm a member of the Fenway um, Civic um, Neighborhood Association now. I help fund their outreach um, to people that um, 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 have needed food assistance. Um, okay, so, um, so would you say um, you've been open for nine months at Northeastern and you have a 2 a.m. closing there seven days a week? Yes. Okay. Um, and, and, and what can I, and also can I just say that the midnight to 2 a.m. are our two busiest hours of the day. 
Um, and even I, though we stop letting people in at 2 a.m., if their people are already in line in the store, they get to go through. And I have on average 30 people that are in line at 2 a.m. Um, that that still get served. At, at, at some point, um, I will go back to the board to, to uh, try to prove that, um, to try to increase that to 4 a.m. as well. And I, I'm, I, I, I can't speak for the neighborhood associations now, but I think my relationship with them over the last year um, has been um, excellent and there haven't been any issues. And I think that, um, Okay. I, I hope that I'm just I'm just trying to get a feel for I'm just trying to get a feel Good. for the, the sequence yeah. of events. So back to Northeastern has been open for nine months. It's 2 a.m. for seven days a week. Your Emerson location you wanted later, but you settled on midnight and you plan in the future to come back and ask after you build up um, some sort of um, track record in those locations for for a later time. That is fine. So I just I'm trying to trying to wrap right. my head around it because we yes I, I don't remember every single and, and also just for Emerson just in the Emerson location the Midtown Neighborhood Association um, was was very vocal about not supporting a later than midnight license um, the Alston Civic Association is has has supported our 4 a.m. license. And, and the Midtown Neighborhood Association, largely uh, um, this was a, um, the, the, the location I'm at on the corner of Boylston and Tremont, it, 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 you know, 20 years ago, it was the combat zone or it was the edge of the combat zone and the sort of the neighborhood association around, uh, around that space sort of are still sort of spooked by when it was the combat zone. And so being openly, there's also four or five clubs that are within a couple and they wanted people to sort of leave when they left those clubs at, at 2 a.m. So there was all kinds of sort of reasons that were sort of at play there that are not at play at the 957 ComAv location. None of those things are relevant there. Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Shaw, for um, all of that information. Commissioner Curran, yes. or Commissioner Saxon, do you have any questions? Not at the moment, thank you. Just a quick question about your clientele. Who who are these people who are buying your food at between midnight and 4 a.m.? Or do you expect? Um, so there's a large number. I mean, there's three or four different clientele. Can I say that? One, uh, certainly one of my clientele in the Harvard Square location that's open till 4 a.m. is the Harvard Police Department and the Cambridge Police Department. I have lots of police officers that um, that purchase food during there. Um, it, it is um, it, it is certainly students that um, that at that, that at 2 a.m. Um, want to study break and, and eat. There's a large number of that. It's it's also um, people that. I'm in the hospitality industry that work until midnight or one or two a.m. That after they're done with work, have a place to go. Um, the, the, um, it, it, it's hospital workers. It's um, th there's a whole sort of host of people that I have found because I've now sort of done this for sort of sixteen sort of store years um, that are looking for food um, in the early morning hours and I'm serving sort of that need. Thank you, any further questions from the commissioners at this point? No. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Yes, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Molly Griffin with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Um, speaking on behalf of my colleague, Connor Newman. The applicant presented to the Austin Civic Association and has received their support. Uh, residents felt that the closing time they're seeking is an appropriate part of the neighborhood. And residents also appreciated the owner's community ties and commitment to workers' rights. Um, at this time, our office would like to defer to the board, but we understand that Boston University has expressed some concerns and we will let them elaborate on those. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? I see a raised hand from Ken Ryan. Good morning, Madam Chair and Commissioners. My name is Ken Ryan, and I'm Director of City Relations in the Office of Government and Community Affairs at Boston University. I'm joined this morning by Kelly Nee, Chief of the Boston University Police Department. 
On behalf of Boston University, we are here this morning to express concerns related to the applicant's proposed 4 a.m. closing time. While the university is in support of and welcomes the applicant's new location at the former Blue State Coffee outlet at 957 Commonwealth Avenue, we feel a 4 a.m. closing is uncharacteristic for the area and could result in otherwise avoidable circumstances and incidents at that hour on Commonwealth Avenue. We respectfully request the applicant and the board to amend the hours of operation to 8 a.m. to 1 a.m., which would bring the taqueria in line with other late night dine-in and takeout establishments in the area, such as Blaze Pizza at 961 Commonwealth Avenue and Raising Canes at 949 Commonwealth Avenue, which closed between 10 p.m. and 11 p.m., and T. Anthony's located at 1016 Commonwealth Avenue for over 35 years, which closes at 1 a.m. We very much appreciate the opportunity to express our concerns here this morning to the board and look forward to the applicant opening its new location on Commonwealth Avenue. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I see a raised hand as well from a Mark Harrington. Is that on this item? Uh, good morning. Uh, this is Captain Mark Harrington from District 14 in Alston Brighton. Uh, I felt compelled to come on and, and just say that as a supervisor downtown for uh, eight years on the midnight shift, uh, where, where we had the nightclubs getting out and pizza stores and other stores uh, open, it, it creates problems. And uh, we don't want to have to commit police there on the midnight shift for, uh, for incidents. Thank you, Captain. Are there any additional individuals who would like to testify on this matter? I have a question for the Captain. Mm -hmm. Captain Harrington, yes. um, BU is supporting a 1 a.m. closing license. Um, are there other establishments in this area that are open till 2 a.m.? I mean, I, I don't expect you to know, but are you, I, are you requesting a 1 a.m. closing or would you be amenable to 2 a.m.? That would I think that would be more in line with the other stores in the in the neighborhood. Uh, so my, con my concern is that I would have to commit cars down there on a nightly basis, uh, you know, after 1 a.m. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Are there any additional individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Oh, hang on, I do see a hand raised from Lieutenant Detective Troy. Lieutenant oh, Troy? On, you're, on, you're on mute. Here we go. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say from, a, um, from a, a, an enforcement perspective from the licensed premise unit that uh, our officers, uh, our unit works till uh, from 7.30 to 3 a.m. So uh, a 4 a.m. license would uh, um, present different issues that would uh, incur additional resources and expenses for, for, uh, for the unit. And um, as the, the captain also alluded to, uh, I worked in, in Olson Brighton for many years and uh, um, we had particular problems for, for many years with uh, um, late night establishments, Riley's Roast Beef in particular, well, we had to commit resources there that was uh, uh, serving late night. I know they're not there anymore, but from a historical perspective, uh, uh, late night, um, very late night service uh, incurs a lot of uh, different issues and it becomes a focal point for, for people. Not, uh, and I understand from that gentleman's perspective that he's serving uh, hospital workers and such, but it also becomes a, a focal point for, uh, um, for people coming from nightclubs who are inebriated and also for uh, people with more nefarious means that are uh, that, that, that wish to prey on people who are inebriated so that's uh, that'd be a concern of, of, of mine thank you lieutenant can, there... can I can I just have one can, can I um sure yep briefly address this thank you yeah yeah Yes, it's just, once again, I have 16 store years of experience now and, and we have not had one single incident. And just to, I am willing to sort of compromise and go back to 3 a.m. My 4 a.m. was generally 
um, my, my interest originally was to do a 3 a.m. license, but the problem with doing 3 a.m. is then my staff, you know, it spends an hour sort of cleaning the store at the end of the night, and then at 4 a.m., public transportation doesn't start for another hour. Um, and, and so I went to 4 a.m. just as a way of accommodating my staff, but I would go back to 3 a.m., and that way it, there wouldn't be additional, um, since, the, since the police are on in this area until 3 a.m. Um, and I would just keep my staff sort of prepping for the last two hours um, until the until the tea opens again. Um, so I'm willing to compromise to go back to 3 a.m. But um, it, it just hasn't been the case that we have had. And we could talk to the Cambridge Police Department, to the Harvard Square Police Department. For six years of experience, there have not been a single issue um, at Al Jefe's. Um, so at any rate, the, I, I would just like to add that into the. How many, you. How many employees do you have working um, from 3 to 5 AM? Um, approximately eight. OK. Thank you, Mr. Shaw, and I see a hand raised as well from Kelly Nee. Hi, good morning, everybody. Thank you very much for, uh, for having us today. I want to uh, endorse the comments from Lieutenant Detective Troy and Captain Mark Harrington. I've been a police officer for nearly 40 years. I worked with the Boston Police Department for 34 of them, and I've been at Boston University for five. I think a 4 a.m. license is uncharacteristic for this location. And it also, I'm concerned about the traffic uh, implications on Calm Ave. You know, we have a new um, bike path and we have pedestrian walkways there. So there's limited traffic and there's very, very limited parking in that area. And I do, I, you know, echoing the Captain Harrington's comments that, you know, there, it, it, it could be a magnet for, you know, late night after hours bar crowd that unfortunately uh, are not there for the right reasons in addition to serving a, a university population. So uh, I'm endorsing the police perspective on this that 4 a.m. is much too late. I would absolutely support a 1 a.m. Um, license. And we really do welcome the, the business going into the Blue State location. And I'm sorry that I hadn't had an opportunity to meet with Mr. Shaw prior to this because I have met frequently with other businesses that were opening in our area around Calm Ave, and none of them are open until 4 a.m. Uh, Thank you for that. Are there any additional individuals who would like to provide testimony on this matter? Great, seeing none, the board will take this matter under advisement. Thank you. Now calling item number three, Smashburger Acquisition Boston LLC, doing business as Smashburger, located at 545 Boylston Street. Holder of a common victualler, seven day wines and malt beverages with liqueurs license, has petitioned to change the manager of the licensed business from Rachel Cirillo to Jarrah N. Turner, who is present on behalf of the licensee. J <clears throat> Excuse me, Jarrah N. Turner here. Great, Mr. Turner, you may proceed. Yes, um, so Rachel has moved on from the position and I have taken over as general manager of the location. So we're just trying to get all licensing in line with the management. Okay. Thank you, Chairman Joyce, any questions? Oh, you're on mute right now. Sorry about that. Um, Mr. Turner, are you um, a citizen? Uh, yes. Of Boston, you mean? Of the United States. These are, oh, these, yeah, are these are four absolutely. standard questions we ask yeah, um, <laughs> absolutely, anyone yeah. that appears before us for a manager of record. So I'll start over. Are you a citizen of the United States? I am. Are you a resident of the Commonwealth? I am. Do you have experience in the food and beverage industry? Yes. Are you familiar with our rules and regulations? Um, the laws of the Commonwealth and the ABCC as they pertain to the sale and service of alcohol? Absolutely, yes. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Curran of Saxon, do you have any questions? Nothing further, thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? The board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. 
Now calling item four, Azumi LLC, doing business as Zuma, located at one to seven Dalton Street. Holder of a common vigiler seven day all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to change the manager of the licensed business from Teddy King to Edwin Laxa de la Cruz. Attorney Dennis Quilty. Attorney Quilty. Good morning, Attorney Green, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, Dennis Quilty representing the licensee. With me this morning is Mr. de la Cruz, who is on the screen, who is the proposed uh, new manager of record at this location. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. Um, do you want to continue, or do you want me to? No, I, I, it's a simple change of uh, change of manager. One person okay. moved on. Mr. Dela Cruz is taking over that spot. This is the Zuma restaurant down on uh, Dalton near the old uh, Sheridan Boston. Um, gotcha. I'll ask him the manager record questions. Um, Mr. Dela De Cruz, are you a citizen? Yes, I am. Are you a resident of the Commonwealth? Yes. Do you have experience in the food and beverage industry? Yes. Are you familiar with the rules and regulations of this board, the ABCC and the laws of the Commonwealth as they pertain to the sale and service of alcohol? Yes. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Carney, Commissioner Saxon, do you have any questions? Nothing further. Nothing further, thank you. Thank you, are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item number five, GBLL Holdings MA LLC, doing business as Boston Liquors, located at 225 to 227 Cambridge Street in Alston. Holder of a retail package store, all alcoholic beverages license, has petitioned for a change of officers, directors, LLC manager of the corporation. Secondly, has petitioned to change... As a reminder, please keep yourself on mute until you're uh, appearing before the board. Secondly, the applicant has petitioned to change the manager of the licensed business from Ryan J. Grady to Richard T. Hanna, attorney Joseph Devlin. Attorney Devlin. Uh, good morning, my name is Joe Devlin. I'm a partner at the firm of Upton, Cannell and Devlin with offices at 112 Water Street in Boston, Massachusetts. I represent GBLL Holdings Mass LLC or MALLC. Uh, they're here as, as uh, described for a change of LLC manager and a change of manager record for pending application at 371 Dorchester Ave in Boston. With me, I think, is Rich Hannum, who is the proposed uh, LLC manager and the manager of record. There's just, I've never seen so many people on here before. So, I, I, Rich, are you here? Yeah, good morning, Jeff. Oh, great, thank you. Um, Rich is the director of regional operations for the company. He will be the permanent LLC manager, but he's uh, temporarily filling in as the GM of this location until they locate and hire a new manager. And then we come back before you with a, a change of manager. Um, this is a pending application. It was a return no action because the officer, uh, the LLC manager, manager of record left employment uh, before the application can be approved and, and per ABCC custom and practice, they require us to go do a change of LLC manager to replace the person before they'll approve it. Uh, Rich is a resident of Massachusetts 30 Mallard Drive in Sharon, Mass. He is a U.S. citizen. He is also generally familiar with the rules and regulations of the city of Boston and the Commonwealth of Massachusetts for the service of alcoholic beverages, but is uh, going to take an in-person tips course uh, that the company is doing in February. So he will be tip certified before this application is approved as well. Um, his experience uh, prior to coming to GoPuff was seven years in Amazon and prior to that 20 years in the United States uh, Navy as a special operations officer. Um, there's gonna be no changes to the operation or the uh, description of the license premises as, as previously presented to the board. Thank you. Thank you. I have no questions. Commissioner Curran or Commissioner Saxon? I do not. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item number six, Black Bottle Wines, LLC, doing business as Coruscant Wines, located at 899 Congress Street. Holder of a retail package store, all alcoholic beverages license, has petitioned to pledge their license to Eastern Bank. 
who is present on behalf of the licensee. Good morning, Mr. Green, Dennis Colty, attorney representing the uh, licensee. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. With us are uh, Steve and Dave Scary, who are the uh, owners of the business. The board licensed this establishment uh, within the last probably three or four months. This is a new, a new uh, build out in the um, residential building uh, just across the street from the uh, music pavilion on uh, Northern Ave. The um, matter before you was a pledge of the license to their lender, Eastern Bank, um, for construction and related items. Uh, and again, Mr. Both Mr. Scary are here to answer any questions you might have. I actually don't have any questions. Thank you for explaining the reason for the pledge. Um, Commissioner Curran and Commissioner Saxon. Nothing, thank you. No questions. Great. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Good morning, Madam of the Chair, members of the board, Anna Calderon from Councillor Flink's office. The councillor would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? The board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item number seven, Vesper LLC, doing business as Vesper Bar, located at 61 Brookline Avenue, holder of a common vitular seven-day all-alcoholic mm -hmm. beverages license, has petitioned for an approval of a management agreement between Vesper LLC and Fenway Plant-Based LLC. Attorney Nicholas Zazula. Attorney Zazula. Good morning, uh, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, Attorney Nick Zazula, McDermott, Quilty, and Miller, uh, here on behalf of the licensee, Vesper LLC, in the proposed management entity, Fenway Plant-Based LLC at 61 Brookline Avenue. Uh, here before you today uh, with me is uh, Matt Bronfeld from the proposed management entity, as well as Melanie Isola. And I also have Panos Demeter from the licensee uh, and uh, license holder, as well as the uh, property owner. Um, you may recall, Madam Chair, we were here in front uh, of you back in August for a corp to corp transfer where the owner of this property in the building, Panos, um, took ownership of his former tenant's liquor license. This was the uh, former Boston Beer Works location by Fenway, and he took control of the license upon termination of the business um, because of the, the pandemic. Uh, at that point, we were interviewing uh, potential suitable restaurant operators and concepts for the space. Uh, we had hoped to be back in the near future for that application, uh, so we are here now, a few months later, seeking that approval. And uh, Panos has identified an operator uh, under a, a management agreement set up uh, where the operator will manage uh, and operate the liquor license for him as the licensee and property owner. Um, honestly, given the uncertainties around the restaurant and hospitality industry with the ongoing pandemic, uh, neither party really wanted to enter into, into a long-term lease at this time. Um, so they thought this would be a good solution to see if the concept would work at this location uh, instead of going uh, into a lease. So the proposed operator is Fenway Plant-Based LLC. Uh, they recently opened and currently operate a similar concept in Cambridge called Plant Pub uh, in Kendall Square. So this would be their second location. Uh, we did provide the board uh, with some background materials uh, before the hearing uh, to give you a little bit more context on, on this concept. Um, but in, in, in brief, uh, it is a plant-based pub concept. And what that means is they are looking to combine the world's best craft beers and drinks with plant-based versions of your favorite pub foods. Um, so this concept would go along with the existing all alcoholic beverages like uh, license that is to remain at the premises uh, and would offer something distinctly different uh, in the Fenway neighborhood and, and around uh, Fenway Park as well. Um, there are no alterations to the premises. They will maintain the existing 1 a.m. closing hour, um, likelihood of slightly reduced hours on game days uh, and on, uh, I'm sorry, on non-game days and during the week, uh, as is pretty typical uh, in the Fenway neighborhood around the ballpark. Um, Fenway Plant Based is a restaurant group with experience uh, in the restaurant industry. Uh, they have another restaurant uh, called Double Zero over on uh, Newberry Street with the same landlord. So they have an existing uh, relationship. Um, they have experience uh, in the greater Boston area and uh, across the United States. So 
The idea here is that they will manage the liquor license and the restaurant on behalf of Vespera LLC, which is uh, the liquor license holding company for the landlord of the premises. Um, I finally will know we did outreach with the Fenway Civic Association uh, and the Kenmore Association. Uh, I believe the, Fen, uh, the Fenway Civic Group uh, Association did submit a letter of support uh, to the board yesterday. Um, again, you know, I know that was a lot of information, but um, you know, both myself and Matt and Panos are here and happy to answer any questions that you may have on the application. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Attorney Sazula. I know it's not before us today, but who is going to be the manager of record here? So uh, that's a good question, Madam Chair. Right now, the manager of record is uh, Mr. Demeter. Uh, who is um, the, the landlord and who is the manager of record from the corp to corp transfer back in August. Um, mm -hmm. Right now, they do not have a manager of record uh, set up for the store because they are still uh, getting up and in, in, in operating. So the, the idea would be that we would be back in front of you uh, with that manager of record before opening. Right now, they don't have that person identified. Um, okay. So we would be applying shortly uh, as we get closer to opening. I think they're looking to open later in the spring. Um, so Mr. Demeter would not be the manager of record when they open and operate, and, and we will be back before you for that uh, specific application when we get closer to opening. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Curran or Commissioner Saxon, do you have any questions? None for me, thank you. None for me, either. thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Molly Griffin with the Mayor's Office and Neighborhood Services. Um, our office would like to defer to the board on this decision, but we have received, or I've received um, a letter of support from the Fenway Civic Association regarding this. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other elected officials or representatives who would like to testify on this matter before we turn to general testimony? No, thank you. I do see a raised hand from Pam Beal. Yes, good morning. My name is, uh, good morning, Madam Chair and members of the board. My name is Pam Beal and I'm here in my capacity as president of the Kenmore Association to support this new management agreement and to let you know that we're looking forward to working with this new group as they activate this space. So we hope that the board gives us a positive approval. So thank you. Thank you. Are there any additional individuals who wish to testify on this matter? Uh, Lisa Habig, did you unmute yourself for this? Okay, seeing no further testimony, the board will take this matter under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now calling item number eight, High Street TRS LLC, doing business as High Street Place, located at 100 High Street. Holder of a common vigil or seven day all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned for an approval of an additional management agreement between High Street TRS LLC and RIMSAM LLC. Attorney Dennis Quilty. Attorney Quilty. Morning again, Mr. Green, Madam Chair, members of the board. Thank you very much, Dennis Quilty, representing the licensee. <coughs> Excuse me. This is a matter of the overall matter, if you will, the, the license of this location was approved some time ago by the board. And there were always uh, cons considered to be multiple management agreements. This is a, for lack of a better term, food hall uh, style of operation, similar to those at the um, the, the garden and over in the Fenway. The, uh, this particular applicant, RIMSAM, was one of the original uh, proposed users at the site. And we had some issues, uh, some technical issues with the ABCC, which had to be worked out, which is why they are uh, kind of following the original application. In any event, we, I think Lauren Johnson, who's the approved manager for the uh, license, is with us, as well as Allison Fisher and Crystal mostly from uh, RIMSAM, but uh, this is a um, continuation, if you will, of the original license and the multiple management agreements that the board uh, approved some time ago. So it's kind of a, a final applicant, if you will. You recall we were here about a couple of weeks ago on a simple CV only, uh, but this is another one that would operate under the existing alcoholic beverages license if approved. And we're certainly any of us are here to answer any of your questions. Thank you, Attorney Quilty. I'm just curious, how many um, places will be operating under the um, liquor license at this location? Is Lauren with us is plus or minus 11 or 12? Yeah. 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 There, there she is. There's Lauren. Hi. And then so they just... all 
Yeah, could you tell us a little bit more about that? Oh, I didn't hear the question. Are they all up and opened, or what's the timeline? I haven't been there yet. So we're going to be opening in March. Um, we just obviously had some difficulty getting open with the pandemic. Uh, we're supposed to open March 2020 and then have just delayed with the um, slow occupancy level of the properties surrounding the food hall. Okay. So there'll be 11 or 12 in separate like food stalls operating under this one liquor license. Precisely. Yes, yes ma'am. Okay. Thank you. I don't have any questions. Commissioner Carr and Commissioner Saxon. And for me, thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Madam of the Chair, members of the board, Ana Calderon from Councillor Flynn's office. The councillor would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any additional individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item number nine, Columbus Avenue Liquor Group, Inc. doing business as Wine Emporium located at 474 Columbus Ave in Roxbury. Holder of a retail package store, all alcoholic beverages license, has petitioned to pledge the license, stock, and inventory to Newburyport Five Cents Savings Bank. Attorney James Rudzer. Attorney Rudzer. Uh, good morning, um, Madam Chairman and members of the board. My name is James Rudzer and I represent Columbus Ave Liquor Group, Inc. Um, What's before you is a petition to pledge the license, the stock and the inventory. It's a refinance of an existing uh, commercial loan that the business has. Okay, thank you very much, Attorney Redzer. For that explanation, Commissioner Curran, Commissioner Saxon, do you have questions? No questions, thank you. Come for me, thank you. Thank you, are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? The board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item 10, University of Massachusetts Building Authority, doing business as University of Massachusetts Club, located at 1 Beacon Street. Holder of a club, all alcoholic beverages license, has petitioned to change the manager of the license business from Abby Pingator to David Eichstadt. Secondly, has petitioned for an approval of a management agreement between University of Massachusetts Building Authority and University Services, Inc. Attorney Nick Zazula. Attorney Zazula. Uh, yes, good morning. Uh, again, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Nick Zazula, McDermott, Quilty, and Miller, uh, here on behalf of the University of Massachusetts Building Authority uh, at one, uh, DBA UMass Club at One Beacon Street. Uh, with me today is David Eichstadt, uh, who's the general manager and the proposed manager of record. Um, for two updates on behalf of the licensee, um, this is a club uh, all alcohol license located on Beacon Street. And uh, we're, the first thing I'll go into is the approval of a, of a management agreement. Um, this is a longstanding management agreement for about six years um, that uh, ha um, has not been approved by this board uh, or the state. So we're seeking approval of it today. Um, the University of Massachusetts Building Authority is the licensee. Uh, they are a body, politic, and a corporate and public instrumentality of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Um, and they, are, as the licensee, have contracted under a management agreement with University Services, Inc., uh, which is a Massachusetts nonprofit corporation since 2015. Uh, and that is to manage the UMass Club for the operation, supervision, management, uh, et cetera, of the license in the licensee at One Beacon Street. Uh, University Services, Inc. Uh, was organized and operates exclusively as a supporting organization under the uh, Internal Revenue Code of 1986 for the benefit of the University of Massachusetts. And what that means is they perform the functions of the university, uh, including the management and operation of its dining and social clubs in the state, and that includes the licensed premises. Um, and the licensee. So University Services uh, supervises, manages, directs all the things under a management agreement uh, for the license premises on behalf of and for uh, the licensee, not only at this location, but uh, at other locations in the Commonwealth. Um, the licensee's board, again, which is the University of Massachusetts Building Authority, has no real role over the operation of the license. Uh, it's an appointed, uncompensated, and volunteer board. Um, and 
Unfortunately, as a club licensee with a volunteer board, uh, officers, et cetera, this management agreement, although it has been in place for several years, uh, was never actually submitted for approval to the city or the state. So we're looking to rectify that today uh, with this application. Uh, we're looking to have uh, it officially recognized and approved um, by the board. So that was the first application, Madam Chair. I'm happy to pause there or, or I can go right into the, the manager of record as well, if you'd like. You can proceed. Thank you, Madam Chair. So the second uh, application uh, matter is for a change of manager of record to Mr. Eichstadt. Uh, he is here on video with us today. Uh, he's a longtime UMass employee for over 15 years, and he's actually been at the UMass club since 2015 when they moved to One Beacon Street. Um, he previously was the manager of record on a UMass liquor license uh, at, in Amherst at their main campus. Uh, so he has extensive experience with many years in the industry uh, in supervising the alcohol sales uh, to customers. Um, as required, uh, Mr. Eichstadt is a citizen of the United States. He's a resident of Massachusetts. He's over 21 years of age, uh, and he has experience in the restaurant and hospitality industry. Um, besides the approval of uh, Mr. Eichstadt as a manager of record and uh, asking for the approval of the, the management agreement that's been in place, there are no other operational changes, uh, no changes to the hours or anything like that of, of the UMass club. Um, so I know, again, that's a lot of information. Uh, either myself or Mr. Eichstadt are happy to answer any questions you might have on the application. Thank you. If Mr. Eichstadt would just say hello because I don't see him on my screen. Yeah, hi, good morning. Uh, oh. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Good morning. Thank you for, thank you for joining us um, and your um, attorney um, read into the record, um, the four manager of record questions. We just have to make sure you're here with us. Sure. Yeah. Um, do you have any questions, Commissioner Curran or Commissioner Saxon? I do not, thank you. I do not, thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Calling item 11, Qdoba Restaurant Corporation doing business as Qdoba Mexican Eats located at 101 Causeway Street. Holder of a restricted common victualler seven day one small beverages license has petitioned for a change of officers, directors, LLC manager who is present on behalf of the licensee. Cindy Block. Thank you, uh, Ms. Block, do I understand correctly that item 12 is the same transactional matter? That is correct. Okay, I'll read item 12 into the record as well. Uh, Qdoba Restaurant Corporation doing business as Qdoba Mexican Eats located at 17 to 23 Forsyth Street. Holder of a common victualler seven day wines and malt beverages license has petitioned for a change of officers, directors, LLC manager. Ms. Block, you may proceed. Thank you very kindly. Good morning, board. Uh, Qdoba Restaurant has recently had a upheaval of officers, so to speak. We originally had Chip Siegel and Keith Gilbert on the license. Uh, Chip Siegel has terminated out in his replacement. Uh, a gentleman by the name of Levith and Wynn was hired. Prior to Mr. Wynn being qualified by the board, he terminated out. Board has decided that the only officer to keep on the license at current moment is Keith and Keith will be acting as president. Uh, secretary and CEO uh, for the remaining uh, time. Thank you very much. I don't have any questions on 11 or 12. Commissioner Curran, Commissioner Saxon, do you? None from me, thank you. I do not, thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on these matters beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify? Seeing none, the board will take items 11 and 12 under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item 13, Unity Sports and Cultural Club Inc. doing business as Unity Sports located at 10 Dunbar Avenue in Dorchester. Holder of a common victualler seven day all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to provide bottle service on their license premise. Attorney Michael Ford. Attorney Ford. 
Good morning, Michael Ford here for Unity uh, Sports and Cultural Club. Uh, with me is uh, Sean Cooper, the uh, President Emeritus and Vice President of the nonprofit. It's located on Dunbar Ave in Dorchester and it's a request for bottle service. Uh, existing alcohol beverage uh, license, give you a little bit of uh, the history. It's a nonprofit, it's more than just a bar. It's a center of community gatherings for the people from the West Indies and the Caribbean. They've been uh, functioning and going strong for approximately 53 years, promoting their cricket and, and other charitable uh, events. The request for the bottle service is really as an amenity to an establishment that's uh, already doing events and functions. Uh, we've submitted an updated and revised uh, extensive security plan and policies and procedures after we came into this. We didn't file the original uh, petition. We came in here a little later. Uh, but some of the highlights in there that are important is reservations are required, guest contact information is taken, a head count is taken in advance before, uh, get, you know, as part of the reservation. Um, other key things is each party is escorted to the designated table and they're utilizing the wristband uh, the procedure where the table that you're at will be connected to your wristband. So every there's no, there's not going to be a table hopping. Servers will be specifically assigned to each uh, table uh, for monitoring and for the actual pour. Uh, you'll also see in there the numbers of uh, servers, uh, security, door attendants and the like in the plan. Um, as far as the exhibits, what we try to do here is we wanted to show you who was in support. And uh, I think there's over 200 uh, individual letters of support addressing public need, the appropriateness of this operator uh, and their history in the, uh, in the area. Those come from the, the vicinity as well as right on the street that uh, Unity Sports is located. Um, there was, I know Mr. Cooper um, has been working with uh, Mr. Peebles and ONS and the Butters meetings uh, where it had, so the community process has been completed. And uh, with that, we can answer any of your questions, either I or Mr. Cooper, and we just ask you to allow the petition for this uh, great licensee. Um, Attorney Ford, what are the hours of operation at um, this location? This is a 2 a.m. license. Okay. Okay. So um, the, they right now these are like special events that they have that they have here. It's not. Um, well, like they're, they're open well. because of their license. Um, you, you know, they're required to operate under. I believe it's the CV. Uh, standards, but in addition to that, they'll have the special events because the way that it's set up is there's like two function rooms, let's say like medium sized function um, rooms where uh, people meet, but they do, they, they are open uh, seven days a week. Uh, and they do have an extent, and this is something uh, since I started representing them, they do have an extensive, uh, you know, if, if there were ever a line issue, line control um, and a professional security staff that makes sure that there's uh, no effect to the neighbors. Okay. Um, have they applied for bottle service before? I don't believe they have. Okay. Mr. Cooper? No. no, we have not. Okay. Okay. Um, I may have some more questions, but Commissioner Kerr and Commissioner Saxon, do you have any questions? Uh, just a general comment that there have been a couple of hearings that I've attended where um, bottle service has been an issue when um, the bottle is left unintended and people get the idea that they can serve the bottles. So when you said that you, you, know, you have the, um, the servers making sure that they monitor the tables, really monitor the table. Somehow it, there's always gonna be one person who just feels that they can serve themselves. And also for um, mixed tables, just make sure that no one who is under 21 uh, either gets a pass off or um, somehow mistakenly gets a, um, a chance to drink. Understood. Understood. 
Thank you. Commissioner Curran, any questions? Not at the moment. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Hi, yes. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Dante Peebles here from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Um, at this time, the Mayor's Office is likely to defer to the board for your judgment. Um, there was an abutters meeting held by ONS on October 19th where residents voiced concerns about parking, traffic issues, reported multiple traffic accidents on Dunbar Ave and in the vicinity after the establishment um, closed it up at uh, 2 a.m., 1 to 2 a.m., um, trash buildup and, and also noise altercations, noise from altercations coming from the area of the venue after closing time. Um, there were also, there was opposition on the call as well as um, support. Um, also, there was a, com a community meeting held on December 7th by Talbot Norfolk Triangle and community and the Community Improvement Association where residents voiced concerns on Moody Street, Wentworth Terrace and um, Wentworth Street as well as Tory Street. Um, the Neighborhood Association warrant was in opposition. Um, this was the result uh, after another community meeting that was held on January 25th. Um, again, uh, the Neighborhood Association was in opposition at that time. Um, at this time, the Office of Neighborhood Services has received about 25 to 30, 25 to 30 um, letters of support. About 13 or 14 of those were from abutters. Um, we've also received about eight letters of opposition from abutters and um, neighbors in, in the vicinity. Um, at this time, again, the mayor's office would like to defer to your judgment. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other elected officials or their representatives who would like to testify on this matter before we open up to general testimony? Yes. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Dustin Gardner, City Councilor Worrell's office. Uh, we would request that the board defer the applicant so they can continue community engagement. Uh, we received mostly opposition, but we know that there is support as well. Um, so we'd like to see some more community engagement happen at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Any uh, further testimony from elected officials or their representatives? Thank you. At this time, we will open up for a general testimony. I do see a hand raised. Please do use the raise hand function if you are able to, and we will call in the order that we see them received, uh, starting with Joel Richards, who I see has a hand raised. Uh, good afternoon, or good morning. Sorry, I'm ahead of the time. At the school, time moves faster. Um, <laughs> I just want to speak on the importance of cultural spaces for immigrant groups. Um, Unity serves the entire African diaspora, so of Boston. Uh, therefore, Boston should do everything in its power to help Unity be financially stable. Um, this is a place where I personally have held um, birthday parties, um, where I've come with friends to play board games, um, where I've had business meetings and political meetings, and um, Unity's door is always open. Um, there are places affordable for a lot of people to have birthday parties. Uh, I don't know if you've seen rents go up, but also just to have an event. Those prices are astronomical to have a gender reveal or a baby shower or even a birthday party for kids. And Unity always opens its doors. Uh, they discount their prices, they decorate the room and they go over and above. Uh, they also are the few places when people ask, where can I get this kind of fish or where can I get this kind of liver? Um, Sean Cooper's mother herself um, makes this food and, other, and is training other people and teaching other people and passing on these recipes for people to be able to experience these cultural importances. Um, America historically has been hostile towards these cultural places. We also have to recognize that in our past because then we can't recover. So without, so we should take this as a time to, yes, help unity on whatever it needs to um, bond with the community to get this license so that they can stay financially stable. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. The next hand that I see raised is from Raquel Artie. Uh, Raquel, I'm going to ask you to unmute. You, sorry. Can you guys hear me now? Yes, we can. Hi, how are you? My name is Raquel Artie. I'm a, a part of the community as well. And Unity is our home, you know, away from home. Unity provides, you know, a lot of things for our culture. Just like he said, you know, part, keeping birthday parties. My son died in 2020 and I'm a person of the community. I'm also, you know, I keep small events and Unity, I didn't even know, I was in such devastation when my son passed away and they opened up their home free of charge, their club uh, free of charge and was like, you know what? You can have your, your repass here. And, you know, we were just going into the pandemic at that time and 
you know, we didn't know anything about the pandemic. It was just starting and they were there for me. So, you know, this is a, this is a home away from home for people. They're always there. So I myself would love to see we do anything that we can do to support unity. Thank you, Ms. Artie. And we are very sorry for your loss as well. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you so much. Are there uh, any additional individuals who would like to testify on this matter before us today? Seeing none, the board will take this matter under advisement. Thank you. Shirley Schillingford, I said. Oh, oh my oh, hand okay. was raised. Yes. So sorry, I, I did not see that on the, on okay. the first page of the screen. Go ahead, Ms. Schillingford. Sorry about Um, My name is Shirley Schillingford and I've been working for the city of Boston now for 47 years. That's how many years I have been working with the people at Unity in a, an official capacity and otherwise. I can attest to Unity and the things that they do here. I mean, we have had our senior ball there for years. We have had it there. It's a part of public health, the Carnival, Boston Police B3. And so they have hosted it at no cost to the community. We have had about 300 seniors every single May, the last Friday in May, it's hosted there. And we have also had political forums there where we invite all candidates to come and present to us part of CPAC, which is the Caribbean American Political Action Committee. And we have had appreciations there for the um, pantry, which is now named Shirley's Pantry by our last mayor, Marty Walsh. So we have had appreciation there for all the people who have contributed either with their time, with money, with products to our pantry, because this pantry has never been without food. We do deliver service to people that have COVID and all of that, and Unity have been a stalwart in helping us to do that, in helping us to store our meats that we use for different things. So, I mean, I cannot begin to say all the things that they use. We have had so many meetings there. Nobody thinks about who pay for the electricity there when we have all these meetings. And those meetings are held almost every single week, 52 weeks a year, and not meeting either. So I would appreciate any kind of consideration that you would give to this facility because they have been more than a stalwart to the entire community, to the entire Caribbean community. Thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you, Ms. Schillingford. The next hand I see raised is from Rebecca Horwitz-Willis. I'm going to ask you on mute. There you go. Hello, my name is Rebecca Horitzulis. I live next door to Unity Club. And while I appreciate the tremendous uh, contributions Unity provides to the Caribbean community and to the community at large through their daytime programming and through their, um, you know, the leasing of their venue um, for the, the events um, that people have spoke on, um, I am concerned about the ongoing noise from their late night nighttime club events. And I wanna be clear that my concerns are only about their nighttime up to 2 a.m. parties. Um, and I, I wonder if there are ways uh, that the city might support the financial operations of Unity Club that do not require um, alcohol until 2 a.m. Um, we have called 311. Our building has talked to Sean about noise complaints um, again, up 1 a.m., 2 a.m., and um, those have gone um, unheard. The noise is not just from patrons exiting Unity, the noise is from music um, coming from the DJ that's playing. And so I, I just um, I want to express that again, the nighttime club events have been um, extremely disruptive, particularly for those of us who have small children. Um, and I have concerns about extending the um, ability to serve alcohol. I would Thank like you. to ask. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, concerns I have. That club has been there for over 55 years. And, uh, um, you know, they, yep. they, they, cut, they have a cutoff of one o'clock that they serve alcohol there. So people that, and we have actually asked the police to, to do that measurement, the noise measurement. We have taken that too, just to see how it, any noise of music would affect the people. And they have done that and that, that has not been a problem. I just want to interject that. Thank you, Michelle Ingford. We're going to move on to the next hand I see raised, which is from Kevin. Hi, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, I'm in a building that's under construction right now, so I apologize. Um, I live in the neighborhood, and I also want to echo what an incredible job and a mission that Unity Club does. And I think the more that we can support that, the better. We are concerned is about these nightclub events from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. Um, these are offered by professional party promotion companies. Um, there's a separate entrance for those coming after midnight. So clearly people are coming after midnight. Um, we don't understand why this is needed, full bottle service for patrons until two o'clock a.m. And I realize um, maybe there's last call at one. I heard there was last call at 1.30. Um, the concern is that it's just simply not needed. I, I will point out also earlier, there was, I think three or four police officers testifying about a taco place that wanted to stay open past 1 a.m. And all of those police officers cautioned it and were against it because of the increased traffic, the inebriated patrons that would leave the restaurant and that taco restaurant was not in a res residential area. This one is. Um, and again, we're fully supportive of the incredible work that Unity Club has done, the safe space that they have offered for the last 50 plus years, um, weddings, repasses, things like that. This is not in opposition to that. This is about nightclub events until 2 a.m. Now with full bottle service in a residential area. Thank you. Thank you. I do see Raquel Arty, you've raised your hand again. I know you've already testified. Was there something briefly you wanted to add to your testimony? Or is your hand just still raised from earlier? No, I, 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 I can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes. What I also want to say um, on behalf of the community, this is our community. When we say we want full bottle service, this is a touch of class. Like we are human beings to be served in our community. I, I mean, I don't see anything wrong with that. What would be the difference if we would we go up to the bar? To, for us to sit down, have a nice night out with your spouse or your friends and someone to come and greet you as a human being and serve you and make you feel like you're having a, a touch of class. I don't, I don't, I don't understand. I, I really uh, think that- I can jump, I can jump in Raquel and give you a little bit of uh, some of the concerns the board sees. We, we agree. I, I see what you're saying, how it changes the dynamic of the club. Definitely. But with, with bottle service comes responsibility and the licensee is then responsible for over service for anything that could happen with bottle service, which we're not going to get into right now, but there are concerns with it. We see in other parts of the city, um, uh, the, the, the as Commissioner Saxon said, we, we see at other places that um, people are serving themselves. There's not enough staff to take a look at um, who is actually consuming the alcohol, but this is just, this isn't a violation hearing at any part. We're not, we're not discussing, um, you know, Unity as a licensee right now. We're just, we're just taking the application into consideration for adding this, so. Um, okay. I just want there, there, are, there are there are responsibilities that come with this type of license and this change Absolutely. and I don't want to dismiss those because they're very important and Absolutely. in the eyes of the board um, they are extremely important so we're going to move on from people who have already spoken to people who haven't where um, we have a, a long agenda today thank you chairman Joyce are there any additional individuals who have not yet testified who would like to testify on this matter hi can you hear me we can, could you please uh, identify yourself for the record? I always see a phone number on here. Sure, um, I'm Anthony Gill. I'm currently um, a member of the Unity um, organization. 
And I just like to um, offer my support um, here at this hearing for them to get the opportunity to offer bottle services, uh, which is basically it's going to be it's it's really 10, 10 to fifteen feet away from where the bar exists right now. Um, this request is to get the service, and I do understand from the commissioner that there are certain um, requirements with having table service, but um, this request is to serve drinks 10 to 15 feet from where we currently um, serve um, drinks. And this will give Unity the opportunity to offer um, additional service to the community. Okay, can, I, can I just jump in? I want to ask your attorney, does your client know that you can't just have bottle service 10 feet from the bar? So that has to be no. servers there? Oh no! Oh, that that. Sorry, my my estimate. <laughs> Don't go with my numbers. This is just. I'm just making an analogy that is not too far. I it's mean, it's a totally I, different. I, it's a totally different business model. I want to make sure your attorney has explained that to you. Okay, it's his sure. responsibility to make sure you understand what comes with it. It's ten. Feet. It's it's. Not I, I've explained it to Mr. Cooper. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think. I think, what, I think what this fine gentleman is doing. He's just trying to draw and I and he's not my client is trying to just draw the analogy the uh, the analogy but no that is not part of our uh, of our plan I do have some ideas to address some of these things which I think will uh, Can I finish? help the board once um, everybody finishes basically what I also want to say is that this is not um any special accommodations uh, any special new special accommodations we're asking for. We're not really asking to extend any hours. Um, Unity is it's a staple in this community for over 55 years. So we have to, we have to be a good neighbor and responsible neighbor to be in existence for over 55 years. And, the, and what this will just do will just give us the ability to offer additional services to the community. So that, that's, that's my um, support on this request. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I see another hand raised from Jason Lambright. Mr. Lambright. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. So um, I just wanted to actually voice support for Unity Sports Club. Uh, I currently live less than two minutes away, uh, one street over. Uh, the person that lives in the very local area of Unity Sports Club, I can tell you, uh, having been here for the last six or so years, as far as general noise after two, maybe it's because it's just me living in a city, but it hasn't been additional after two o'clock for me. I haven't been able to hear any loud music additionally from them for me. Uh, I have on a regular basis just not had that much of a noise issue with it. I follow the Citizen app. I checked Citizen app. There's not been any additional police and or involvement that I've noticed within the past year or two regarding Unity Sports Clubs from what I've seen. They seem to be able to run a pretty decently well-maintained and secure uh, location. And uh, I just wanted to again voice support for what they're doing and that it would be for me a definite boon for the neighborhood to have something like this available to us within a local area versus having to go out of the neighborhood we're in to somewhere like say a back bay or some other location in outside of Boston to do that, which then leads to less safe issues. So I just, again, want to make sure I stress my opinion that I do agree with what Unity Sports Club is doing. Thank you. Thank you. And I see another hand raised from Jaja. Um, if you could please identify yourself before you testify. Hello, good morning. My name is Jaja Rudder. Um, I, live in, I live within the area in Car Carmen Square, Dorchester area from unit around Unity area. I grew up in that area. I always attended Unity. I used to play carnival for Unity as a child. I go to a lot of Christmas parties for the kids as a youth growing up. And I still attend Unity Sports and Culture Club. Um, it's close to my house, so I don't have to commute. So it's a, it's a good thing to have in the area where I don't have to worry about my safety or anything because everybody in the neighborhood that attends the club and um, they have good food, nice people. And I would like to see unity to continue and um, 
I hope y'all take that in consideration. Thank you for that, Mr. Rudder. Are there any additional individuals who have not yet testified who would like to testify on this matter? I'm sorry, can I say something, please? My name is Crystal. Go ahead. I'd like to say I'm in, I'm with Unity for, uh, for them to be, basically be able to go ahead and get the bottle service license because I feel like as a people, they have been responsible enough serving alcohol and keeping us safe and making sure that there's security and everything like that. I've been to bars on Dorchester Ave that also serve alcohol. They close, of course, before 2 a.m., but I've seen rowdy situations happen outside and maybe it's not spoken of as much because it's not recorded and reported as much, but Unity has been in the neighborhood for many years. And that building that's on the corner, that building came recently in the last couple of years. People that moved into that building knew what was next door, which is Unity. They know the functions and everything that happened there. So if the noise is a problem, which I'm sure they have tried to work with and work with the patrons and work with the police and work with the community to keep it at a minimum, I think a better option should have been to not move next door to a sports and cultural club that the neighborhood has been going to and they have been serving for X amount of years. And now that we go to develop and, and get another pillar of a benefit to go there, I think it's something that should be done because we as a people deserve it and Unity deserves to be able to gain another income to be able to upgrade their space for us as a patrons and as a community. So that's what I have to say, thank you. Thank you, I see another hand raised from Ms. Mo Filla. Uh, if you could please unmute yourself and identify yourself. Well, you can, Hi, yes, I'm Ms. Mo Filla and I'm a representative or a resident here in Dorchester. I'm in support of Unity um, having bottle service. I actually like to pick, piggyback off the last speaker and, and her sentiments. Ultimately, this is just a benefit for Unity to be able to control the alcohol consumption and um, actually be able to have more monitoring ability. So um, the complaints about noise and things of that sort are not necessarily re relevant to what we're asking to do for the community and for Unity, which is a big staple in our community. Um, so I just like to testify that I am in support of Unity getting this um, opportunity. Thank you for that. I see another hand raised from Dale's iPhone. If you could please identify yourself before you speak. <laughs> Hi, um, my name is Dale Peters. Uh, um, I work for the city of, of Boston as well. Um, I've been a, a patron of um, Unity Sports Club uh, um, for years since I came to this country. Um, I also do um, business with, with them as well, and they have been uh, a, a pillar of, of, the, of the community. So I'm definitely in support of the, um, of the, 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 the border service. Um, uh, again, I think it would it would bring a different type of ambience to the to the club. And uh, again, I'm just in support of it. Thank you. I don't see any other hands raised. Are there any other individuals who have not Hi. yet testified who would like to? Hi, good day. I'm unable to weave. I'm not too sure why. So that's my name that's is okay. Quindel Brad. My name is Quindel Brass now. Um, I also work for Unity as a promoter there. Um, it, the, the, the service that we're asking for would give us the opportunity to provide that that comfort to patrons. And yes, we would have enough, you know, it would help us actually be able to hire more, more staff. Of course, it would be from people in the general area, of course. Uh, and I think it would work in great favor of, 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 the, of what we're trying to, to, to do or cater for, be able to cater for the people that support the unity for over 50 something years. In reference to the license and the complaints in which people have in terms of the noise, everything was already done. I don't think this hearing is about that. Um, so, but in reference to the butters and the services, we would make sure that there's enough people there to actually help us serve the, the liquor and, and, the, and the consumption of the alcohol will be in, in pretty much monitored as well. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Tony J. I see you have a hand raised. Hi, good morning. Uh, my name is uh, Tony. I am a representative of Spark FM Online. It is a radio station that serves the urban and Caribbean um, community here in Boston. Um, we are calling in support of the of Unity. We would love to see bottle service. We would love to see Unity be able to um, upgrade itself and, and to do more for our community that it's already done. 
We um, definitely, we want to let you know, we are on the morning show right now. We are broadcasting this whole meeting live to our morning show audience who has been tuning in and, and, um, and giving their opinion. And we all want to let you know, Unity, we support you. We have supported you. We will be supporting you. It is a very, very good idea to have bottle service. If all of these complaints that the neighbors are having with regard to the noise and with it being disorderly and all of that, it allow Unity to do the bottle service. It is a way to, as Ms. Artie stated, I, I stated this in the comments, to have a touch of class in there. It is a way to for crowd control. It is a way for there to be a lounge, taking it away from a nightclub sort of environment into having it more like a lounge where people can be. Unity has, has always been a place where people gathered, as everyone else has stated, it's a place where we have birthday parties, we have repasts, we have christenings from, from all orders of life. We have always had unity in our community. Our grandmother, who was a member of unity up until the day that she died, has always supported it and she passed it on to all of our generations and that's what we've also done. We just want to let Unity know we are here, we support you, and we definitely suggest that that you uh, pr uh, approve this for them. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, once again, I do not see any additional hands raised. Are there any individuals who would like to provide additional testimony that has not yet been provided? Okay, are there any additional questions from the board at this time? No, okay. Attorney Ford, uh, any closing comments you would like to make on this one, given all the testimony? Well, I think that the overwhelming uh, support speaks for itself. I've, I don't think I've had a petition like this with it's been this many people in support. Um, I know that there was things that were raised that really aren't before the board from, uh, as the chairwoman said, from a discipline area. But as far as noise, any issues, I know that we haven't received any violations. Uh, we will promptly address that. I will uh, sit down with Mr. Cooper immediately following uh, this hearing to go over things based upon my past experiences as a uh, attorney on uh, on noise and also suggest that a great point has been raised that this type of uh, uh, service provides for a, a calm lo lounge like uh, atmosphere. Uh, they have you have a licensee who has a wonderful track record uh, of over I think I heard someone say, 55 years uh, responsible. I know Mr. Cooper, his father, Clarence Cooper, his mother, uh, they've poured uh, you know, all of their time into made this a labor of love. And that's what you have here. And, and I would suggest for the people who know this club, the people who've been in this club, the people that you've heard from right here uh, is overwhelming uh, reason to grant this petition. Uh, if there is any hesitancy, obviously, as the, the this this board well knows, uh, a license could be issued uh, with a probationary uh, period, and I think if it did, uh, this uh, this board would be quite pleased with how they would uh, operate during that time. And so, with that, we ask you to please uh, grant the petition. Thank you, Attorney Ford. And just for the record, um, uh, the board does not give any additional weight to written versus oral testimony. So if there are folks who would like to provide additional testimony, uh, the record will stay open until the vote. You can do so by emailing licensingboard at boston.gov. With that, the board will take this matter under advisement. Thank you so much. Thank you. We will now be calling item number 14, Delta Airlines Inc. doing business as Delta Sky Club, located at Logan Airport Terminal A in East Boston. Holder of an airport club all alcohol license has petitioned to amend the description of the licensed business from on the third floor of the satellite building of Terminal A, Gate A17, containing seven rooms, a bar, and 178 seats, to on the third floor of the satellite building of Terminal A, Gate A17, containing nine rooms, a bar, temporary bar, and 193 seats. Attorney Joseph Devlin. Attorney Devlin. Uh, yes, Joe Devlin, partner with Upton Canal and Devlin at 112 Water Street, Boston, Massachusetts. I'm sure you're thrilled to hear me back here again with the Delta Airlines. Uh, I think we're still in phase two, although my paralegal has it as phase two and three quarters. Um, but this license was approved with a slightly different description, um, which has changed as the construction has gone on. Uh, so I thought it was prudent to come in and, and get it, that approved. 
uh, the prior license application was about 200 square feet less, about 25 seats less, and the occupancy was about 25 uh, people less. Um, and they have a, another small temporary bar in there. This is post-security, so only people who have gone through security and have tickets uh, and who are Sky Club uh, members can get in here. It's all kind of moot because I think in about a month, month and a half, I'm going to be back before you with an application to approve the final phase, which is adding the two clubs that are together, together. Nope, but no other changes to the operations. And I'm done. Thank you. Chairman, do you have any questions? I have no questions. None for me. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Calling item number 15, Calamari Waterfront Corp doing business as the Daily Catch located at 65 Atlantic Ave. Holder of a common vigiler seven day wines and malt beverages with liqueurs license has petitioned to amend the description of the license business from approximately 1700 square feet of restaurant space located on the ground floor within the building known and numbered as 65 Atlantic Avenue, Boston, including dining area, bar, bathrooms, and storage to approximately 2,350 square feet of restaurant space located on the ground floor within the building known and numbered as 65 Atlantic Avenue, Boston, including dining area, bar, bathrooms, and storage. Also to include an annual outdoor patio on approximately 1400 square feet of private property with seating for 80, a closing patio hour of 10 PM, and a portable bar for private events. Secondly, has petitioned to change the manager of the licensed business from Basil Fedora to Louis Fedora, who is present on behalf of the licensee. Good morning. Here's Michael. Um, members of the board, Attorney Michael Brangwin, on behalf of the applicant, Calamari Waterfront Corp. Uh, with me today virtually, although I, uh, there's a lot of participants, but I believe Maria Fedora, uh, both Maria Fedora and Louis Fedora are also present. Um, <clears throat> the applicant, Calamari Waterfront Corp, uh, doing business as the Daily Catch, is applying for an alteration of the existing premise, licensed premises at 65 Atlantic Ave. Um, and to change the manager as, as just read um, to uh, Louis Fredora from Basil Fredora. Um, the expansion really relates to, in the interior space, an expansion into approximately 650 square feet of adjacent space uh, that was formerly a laser studio uh, next to the restaurant. Uh, so this will allow for some additional seating. Uh, and also uh, the... Uh, permanent, I guess, licensing of an outdoor uh, patio on approximately 1,400 square feet of private property. Um, so uh, a little bit about the Daily Catch. They specialize, if, if uh, members of the board may be familiar with the restaurant, there are two locations in Boston, one location in Brookline, and they operate a restaurant. The Fedora family also operates a restaurant in um, Vermont. Uh, they have been... Um, active, I guess you could say, in the Boston restaurant community for, for many, many years. They have an impeccable record uh, in terms of uh, viola no, a violation history. There's no violations at any of their restaurants. Um, and uh, they have kind of successfully and responsibly operated liquor licenses in the city for, for many, many years. Um, Louis Fedora, uh, the proposed manager, uh, will be taking over for his brother, Basil. Uh, he has experience in the hospitality industry. He satisfies all of the necessary statutory requirements to serve as a manager of record for an alcoholic beverage license. And I say permanently licensed the, the outdoor patio. This patio has, has been operated on a seasonal basis under temporary COVID-based uh, licenses for the last two, I guess, warm weather seasons, but they, uh, they have applied to license that. We've received, this is, this is an ongoing project, um, really uh, since the license was transferred to 65 Atlantic Ave. I wanna say it was maybe two years ago. I know it was prior to the COVID pandemic when this transfer uh, was initiated. 
Uh, but this was always the ultimate kind of goal of this operation was that they would expand into this adjacent laser space and operate an outdoor patio on this private property uh, uh, off of Atlantic Avenue. Um, and um, we've got, we went through the community process. <clears throat> At this point, it was, it was a while back because we first needed to go through the zoning approval process. We've received zoning approval um, to operate the outdoor patio. And we've, we've been issued, I believe, a building permit already from uh, ISD to begin the, the expansion into the, the laser studio space and the construction of the supports, I guess, for the, for the patio area. Um, but this is the final piece of approval we need from the city in order to kind of operate this project as was always intended and has been vetted by the community. So um, we're happy to answer any questions. Um, and uh, I'm sure Maria and Louis would also be happy to answer any questions you have about the operations or things like that. Thank you. Um, attorney, is, is Mr. Fredora here? Yes. Louis, are you, uh, I hope that he's available on the, on the yes, hearing. Here. There he is. Let me see him. Where? Could you say your name again? Raise your hand. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, I know you glossed over that he meets the requirements, but I want to ask Mr. Fedora the questions again for our purposes. Are you a citizen? Yes, I am. I am. Okay. Are you a resident of the Commonwealth? Yes, I am. I am. I am. Okay. And your attorney described you do have experience in the food, food and beverage industry. Yes, I do. And are you familiar with the rules and regulations of this board, the ABCC and the laws of the Commonwealth as they pertain to the sale and service of alcohol? I am. Okay. Um, attorney, so can you sum up for us the status of the outdoor patio? Okay. Well, uh, as, I, as I said, I, it has been oper operated uh, on a temporary basis under temporary licenses. Um, it, it, they are prepared to move forward. I think the idea is this spring and Maria or Louie might be able to answer exactly the timeline, but um, in the plans that were submitted, I, you know, there's, um, there's, I guess, I think what, what is a, per, a pergola or some type of, you know, uh, kind of a, a permanent, almost like a wall type structure, not a wall, but kind of planters that will allow for an enclosure of the licensed space. Uh, and it is adjacent to the new, um, the new, what, what we've proposed to be newly licensed adjacent studio space. So they are ready to move forward. We've submitted seating plans. Right, but just jumping in, the temporary outdoor patio program is nothing like the permanent outdoor patio program. So what is the status of this application with the permanent outdoor patio program as far as approvals? Yes. Well, we've had, this is the final approval we would need. Um, uh, in order, we, it's on pro the, the, the patio is on private property. So it was really a matter of zoning approval. Um, which we've received, and um, okay. this Great. this should be the final piece of approval for the outdoor patio. And, and of course, yes, I, I don't mean to uh, equate the two. I know that there's a, a, a much different standard in terms of temporary COVID outdoor seating versus permanent, and that's why we'd like to make this permanent. Um, we, and we've sought all the necessary approvals through the city, other than this final piece. Okay, thank you. Um, Ms. Fedora, did you want to add something? I, I just wanted to say that obviously because we, we took a leap of faith and opened this business up during uh, a month after COVID started, we opened up uh, and signed the lease April 1st of 2020. And we've had many delays because of COVID and you know licensing and all that. And we had all the meetings. We started this process for the zoning a year ago. And we are in the midst of construction. We've already gotten preliminary plumbing done. We're ready to start the preliminary electrical done. And the courtyard use for the 80 patrons was approved as part of the zoning appeals, but because it's tagged to the long form permit with the expansion, it can't, it can't operate until that's done. So it's a okay. catch up to we also, because we were under the temporary COVID outdoor dining, we were able to operate it and it was actually a great trial run. So we were, we didn't open until July of 2020, but we were able to successfully stay open through the October uh, deadline. And then again, last summer also. And as much as we would have liked to have continued staying open in November, because it was private property that was not part of the city of Boston's plan for the temporary seating. 
So we are getting prepared for um, the completion of our project. And uh, we're okay. much looking forward to uh, being able to offer all the of, uh, our location to the neighborhood. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Commissioner, uh, Chairwoman Joyce or commissioners, any further questions? Nothing for me. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Madam Chair, members of the board, this is John Romano from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Um, I do want to mention that the applicant here had gone through an extensive planning process, both through the zoning process and representatives here by attending both the community and also uh, having their own opportunity uh, for the project. At the time, there had been concerns that were raised from the community, but the operator has also been uh, being able to meet those concerns and be able to meet the, with the constituents at those times, uh, the abutters at those times to help mitigate any of the issues that were met um, from, that were raised at those meetings. At this time, our office would like to defer to the board's judgment, um, and thank you all for your time today. Everyone mute themselves unless you're speaking, because we can't hear speaker. Thank you. Are there any additional individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you, members of the board. Calling item 16, Shiv Quick Pick Inc. doing business as Huntington Market located at 1795 Commonwealth Ave in Brighton. Holder of a retail package store wines and malt beverages license has petitioned to change the category of its license from a section 15 wines and malt beverages license to a section 15 all alcoholic beverages license. Attorney S. Craig Herndon, Esquire. Attorney Herndon? Yes. Great, you may proceed. Hi, my name is Craig Herndon. It's a law firm of Goldstein and Herndon out Chestnut Hill. Uh, I represent the applicant today. Um, we're seeking to change the license from a beer and wine license to an all alcohol retail sales. Uh, the, had the, the beer and wine license for a um, few years now um, successfully. Um, the business is predominantly a convenience grocery store. Um, so the alcohol sales, even with the, even if adding the all alcohol sales is still gonna be um, a smaller part of the overall business. And my client, um, Nitin, Nick Patel is here today as well, if you have any questions. Um, okay, so this, I don't believe is a change of category. This would be a request for a different license. No, we have a wine and beer retail sale license now. And we're changing that okay. to all alcohol. Okay. Could you describe for the board the public need for this change? Um, my clients, um, uh, customers have, have expressed interest in, in having that there. Also, during the time of the uh, last two years, it would also uh, help with revenues as well for a small business. Okay. Just uh, narrowing in a little bit more on public need, which is a... Um, it's different than public public support um, in this neighborhood or in this general vicinity. Are there any other package stores that are all alcohol? I'll defer to my client, Nick. Hey, yes. Hi. Good after, Good morning. How are you? Hello. Hi. Hello. Yeah. Hi. Good morning. How are you? Thank Hi. you. Was there? It's, it's, if, yeah, the, the board takes into consideration um, other similar licenses in the area. I'm trying to get on the record. Are there any other all alcohol package store licenses in the area? Or are you offering something different than other people in your area? There is a, a liquor store is in, located on the Bacon Street. It's a different uh, all the way street or uh, more than like a four or five, uh, five or different block in a uh, Brookline. And we are in a Brighton, close to Chestnut Hill Avenue, and uh, my customers are uh, asking for the, if you have a liquor license, well, you added up, it's very close for us to swap everything in your store because I have beer and wine license since uh, five years. 
and they say if you are request and uh, we are requesting and i have a almost 200 petition signature while we have a town meeting here local and uh, right now because of the pandemic and right now we are surviving it's hard to survive so they said and my goal is main to keep the groceries i'm not going to be in the groceries because the food is more necessary so they say if you manage to put the beer and wine in this store you can make put us some liquor so it's a okay. helpful for us and you to survive okay so you're not going to be um taking away a lot of the food to add the other alcohol is that what you're saying for, to us uh I, I i pardon me it's a voice is little broke down okay i think what you said was that you also offer food at this location and you're not going to be replacing a lot of the food with alcohol you're not taking away food as an option no no i'm going to alcohol you're supplying is going to take up the same amount of space is that correct i'm going to be keep the whatever the groceries i'm selling all the groceries cleaning supply everything is going to be as usual i'm not going to be cutting down nothing in my beer and wine section i'm going to be cut it down if i have a little bit space wherever i can cut the wine and beer i cut and add the alcohol in the only in the same place no interest is to keep the groceries and everything as usual okay thank you because you know right now the big chain store and amazon it's uh, right now offering and it's hard to survive in this time of the year you know how the things are going because of the pandemic yep yes thank you mr patel any question for the questions from chairman joyce or commissioner carner saxon at the moment thank you thank you are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter beginning with elected officials or their representatives Yes, good morning Madam Chair, members of the board, Molly Griffin from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services speaking off on behalf of my colleague Connor Newman. Um, the applicant met with the local civic, the Brighton Alston Improvement Association and um, agreed that no nips would be sold and that uh, as was mentioned that food be left on the shelves and that alcohol wouldn't replace the sale of food and groceries. Um, the civic voted to support this proposal, but at this time our office would like to defer to the board's judgment. Thank you. Thank you Molly. Are there any additional individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you yeah, I just have one I just have one more question. I want to confirm that mm -hmm. with Mr. Herndon that your client has agreed to sell no nips. Yes, and that's on the existing license. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thank you. With no further testimony that I see here, we will move forward to item number 17. Boston Culinary Group Inc doing business as the Orpheum Theater located at 1 Hamilton Place holder of a general on-premise wines and malt beverages license has petitioned to change the classification of its license to wines malt beverages and liqueurs pursuant to the authority contained in chapter 481 of the Acts of 1994 attorney Dennis Quilty attorney Quilty good morning again uh, attorney green madam chair members of the board Dennis Quilty representing the uh, applicant This morning we have uh, the licensee Boston Culinary Group uh the uh representative of the uh, culinary group in Mr. Dwyer is with us this morning and on the operation side for the Orpheum Theater I believe we have all of Deirdre Kelly, Aaron McDermott and Laura Marie Cancro. This is an application as part of a series of upgrades uh, that the licensee and the operators have made at this facility over the years. um you know we we were allowed this service uh in seat service similar to other theaters in uh, in the city uh this application is merely to add cordials to their existing malt and wine license as the board is well familiar the other theaters throughout the theater district and uh throughout the city are holders of of all alcohol licenses we did not require that but uh are are in the process of various upgrades the uh, concept of of adding cordials uh, for the uh, entertainment of our guests was something that had been requested uh, we did a great deal of community outreach in this regard with the um 
downtown bid, the Midtown Cultural District Task Force, uh, and uh, Councilor Flynn's office, as well as the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. We're unaware of any uh, objections to this, and we feel it will simply uh, provide greater service to the uh, customers of the theater and the uh, uh, you know attendees of concerts and the like. And we have uh, plenty of uh, folks here on the operations side and the licensee side to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. I don't have any questions. Commissioner Curran or Commissioner Saxon? I do not, thank you. I do not, thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Good morning, Madam of the Chair, members of the board. Anna Calderon from Councillor Flink's office. The councillor would like to go on record in support based on feedback from neighbors, the downtown bid, and Midtown Park Plaza Neighborhood Association. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any additional individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Danny. Good morning, Danny. Good morning. How are you, Mary? Uh, Madam Chair. Board members, I just want to go on record. Uh, my name is Mary Higgins. I am representing the Midtown Park Plaza Neighborhood Association. We did vote and support on this initiative. Thank you. Thanks, Mary. Thank you. Are there any additional individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Great, right, seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item 18, 520 Tremont Inc. doing business as Eagle, located at 520 Tremont Street in Roxbury. Holder of a common vigiler seven day all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to transfer the license from the above to two Greeks and a Persian LLC doing business as Cartel at the same location. Sharok Reza, manager, closing hour 2 a.m. Attorney Mark Evojadis, apologies for any pronunciation. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Mark Evliadis, uh, representing two Greeks and a Persian LLC. Uh, we have before you a petition to transfer the license from 520 uh, Tremont LLC to two Persians and a Greek, uh, staying at the same location. Uh, basically, there's gonna be no changes within the structure of the building, same closing hours uh, that the Eagle had been running there for, I think, over 40 years. Uh, the proposed manager, Sharok Reza, is a long-term hospitality individual. He has worked at uh, Nashville, which used to can be- Can I just jump Bay. in and ask if he's here, just so we can get that? Is, is your uh, client he, here? Yes, I believe the manager of record and one of the other mm -hmm. owners, Peter- get, Yes, Madam Chairwoman, I'm here, Sharok Reza. Thank you, you may proceed. Okay, so Sharok has worked at uh, Nashville, uh, he's worked at Poro on Newbury Street, and he's currently the food and beverage operation manager for uh, the Bostonian Hotel here in Boston. Uh, we've reached out to the neighborhood associations and have received two letters of support from the 8th Street Neighborhood Association and from Union Park Neighborhood Association. We'd like you to be able to uh, approve this petition for transfer into our corporation's name so that we could get open hopefully by March of 2022. As you know, the Eagle was closed due to the pandemic. There were issues with staffing and uh, they weren't able to keep a 40 year plus business alive. These gentlemen look to reopen this as a restaurant lounge location for the neighborhood. And Thank you. Uh, um to to just prevent uh, questions, uh, Mr. Reza is a Massachusetts resident. He is a USA citizen, and he has extensive experience in the hospitality industry. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you, you covered my questions. Commissioner Curran and Commissioner Saxon, do you have any questions? Nothing further. I do not, thank you. Thank you, are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Morning, Madam of the Chair, members of the board, Anna Calderon from Councilor Flink's office. The councilor would like to go on record in support based on a non opposition letter from the A Street Neighborhood Association. Councilor Flink also respectfully requests that the proponent continue to work closely with neighbors and the civic group on any quality of life concerns that may rise related to the closing hour and music. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. 
Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, thank you everybody. everybody. Appreciate it. Calling item 19, BNV8 Inc. doing business as certified meatball company located at 429 West Broadway in South Boston. Holder of a common victual seven day wines and malt beverages with liqueurs license has petitioned to transfer the license from the above to 429 Broadway LLC doing business as certified meatball company at the same location. Eric Allenbach, manager, 1 a.m. closing hour, attorney Nick Zazula. Attorney Zazula. Uh, hey, Secretary Green, attorney Joe Hanley here. Can you hear me? I can, sorry about that. Please proceed. Excellent, attorney. that's okay. Um, uh, anyway, uh, just to introduce myself, um, Madam Chair, members of the board, Secretary Green, Attorney Joe Hanley, McDermott, Quilty and Miller, 28 State Street in Boston, representing uh, the transferee, uh, 429 Broadway LLC. Uh, with me is Eric Allenbach, uh, who is a 50% owner of the LLC. Also with me is Mike Conlon, who's a 50% owner, and uh, as well as uh, Chef uh, Nick Dixon, who is also um, with me. Uh, we are proposing, uh, just to give you a little quick background, um, the existing site, this is the former operations of the certified meatball uh, company uh, that operated with a uh, beer and wine and cordials on premise license issued by this board. Uh, premise has been vacant for a little while, but the license is current. Can you so that you're in more? Um, my client is proposing um, a corp to corp transfer with no changes to uh, the existing license or the pre license premises uh, it will be a different uh, concept uh, and we would be returning with a DBA change uh, at a later point for that. Um, as this board knows, Mr. Colin, Conlon and Mr. Allenbeck uh, have um, deep experience and a very good reputation as uh, good operators, especially in South Boston, uh, with a series of um, establishments immediately next door. Uh, this vacant space presents a detraction to the neighborhood, and we think that there is a need for a, a diner concept. Um, if you know anything about South Boston and the lower end, uh, we have lost malls. Um, Amarines has been approved to be a new development. And so there is a need for a different type of uh, uh, neighborhood diner concept that would serve uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner uh, for casual dining. And Nick Ditson, who has been the uh, chef for the Broadway restaurant group at Capo and Lincoln next door for 10 years, uh, will be launching uh, that program. The license now uh, space is approximately 2,000 square feet. Obviously, that remains. Um, 44 seats and an occupancy of 60. Um, the work, uh, there's a very nice build out that was done. So the work is mostly cosmetic, some furniture, um, some fixtures, but essentially the floor plan uh, remaining the same. And we've submitted that floor plan uh, to the board. There's a 1 a.m. closing hour, which we are not looking to change. We will be serving food up until of midnight, and this is a small intimate space that is intended uh, to have some casual dining in the evening hours. Again, different than what might be available in the immediate area. As for the transaction, uh, this is an asset purchase, 700,000 for the business in the assets, which includes the beer and wine and cordials license, as well as a um, assignment of the lease. The lease uh, term runs until 2031. Um, I believe you have Mr. Allen back as the manager of record and not Mr. Dixon, just to confirm that. Um, in any case, they are both on. Mr. Allen back is um, yep, very experienced, will answer your questions. Uh, and um, the last thing I will say, I'd like to, to thank uh, the mayor's office and city side neighborhood group. Uh, for um, also participating in this. We had a very good abutters meeting, and I think there's strong recognition and support uh, for the concept. And also, more importantly, Madam Chair, for your decision, the character and fitness of this operator and its experience in this neighborhood. So thank you. Thank you. I don't have any questions. Commissioner Curran or Commissioner Saxon? Nothing for me, thank you. Great, thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? 
Yes, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Molly Griffin from the Office of Neighborhood Services, speaking on behalf of my colleague, Haley Dillon. Um, our office would like to defer to the, George, George, the board's judgment, sorry, but um, she wanted the board to recognize that our office has received um, a number of letters of support from the community and one letter of opposi opposition. Um, thank you. Thank you, Molly. Are there any additional individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Good morning, Good Madam morning. Chair, members of the board, Anna Calderon from Councillor Flynn's office. The councillor would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any additional individuals who would like to testify on this matter? I see a hand raised by Lisa. My name is William Fitzmaurice. I live at 293 Silver Street. I've lived there for over 40 years. Eric and Mike run excellent establishments. Both Capo and Lincoln are directly back of my house. Any concerns that the neighbors have had, they've been addressed, and I'm in full support of the transfer of the license. Thank you very much for that. Uh, I see a hand raised by Lisa Pep. You may unmute yourself and go ahead. Hi, yes, I'm Lisa Pop. I live at 277 Solar Street, directly behind uh, the Lincoln. I've lived there for 12 years. and. Uh, uh, Mike and his partners have been uh, good uh, neighbors and uh, respectful considering. Um, so I fully support the project. Thank you for that. Are there any additional individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Great, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Do you want, or just if I may, uh, Mr. Mm -hmm. Green, do you need to uh, query uh, the manager of record on your standard questions, Madam Chair? I may have assumed that Mr. Allenbach was already approved by this board. Correct. Are you already approved by the yeah. board, so we don't need to? Um, yes, ma'am. Thank you yeah, very much. Yeah. Sorry for yeah. the, just wanted to clarify. No, no worries. Thank you for that. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Calling item 20, 325 LLC, located at 81 Fairmount Ave in Hyde Park, holder of a common vigil or seven day all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to transfer the license from the above to Park 54 Restaurant Group LLC, doing business as Park 54 Restaurant and Lounge at the same location. Sean Hunter, manager, closing hour 1 a.m. Lastly, has petitioned to pledge the license to 325 LLC. Who is present on behalf of the applicant? Uh, Sean Hunter is here and I also have Tasha Hall. Great, thank you. You may go ahead. Uh, yeah, we're looking to execute a transfer for the uh, common victim law license. Um, no changes are being made as far as the floor plan, uh, just like uh, cosmetic work is being done. Um, I will be the, uh, the, the, the manager on record. Uh, I do come with uh, two decades of experience. I do live in the Commonwealth kitchen and I am a citizen. Um, any other questions you guys may have for us? Thank you, Mr. Hunter for uh, covering this manager of record questions. Just one final question. Are you familiar with the rules and regulations of this board, the ABCC and the laws of the Commonwealth as they pertain to the sale and service of alcohol? Absolutely, been for the last four years. Oh, okay. Um, so, is the did you say the concept is going to be the same? No, the concept is not going to be the same. We're going to be more restaurant lounge. Um, the foods concept is going to be a little different, but as far as the floor plan, okay. uh, all those things are staying the same. Okay, I'm going to ask Commissioner Curran or Commissioner Saxon if they have any questions for this applicant. No additional. I do not. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Hi, Councilor uh, at Large Ruti Lijen here, uh, testifying um, in support of this liquor transfer. We're really excited in High Park. I'm also a High Park resident. We're really excited to be welcoming, welcoming Park 54 pretty soon. That pays homage to important history um, in our city, particularly with. Um, African American serving um, in, at, in war. We need more gathering spots in High Park. Uh, so we are really excited to have Park 54. Uh, we had uh, a, another establishment there and, and there has been a real void. So we're really excited to have folks committed to High Park who live in High Park, uh, a restaurant lounge run by folks of color. So I am fully in support of this transfer and cannot wait to uh, be a patron. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, I see Councillor Arroyo's office is also present with a hand raised. Uh, 
Uh, good up morning, Chair, members of the board, Jordan Frias here from Councilor Arroyo's office. We just want to go on record in support of this. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other uh, elected officials or their representatives who would like to testify on this matter before we open for general testimony? Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. This is Danielle Fonseca with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. The applicants completed the community process, notifying abutters in the appropriate civic association, and a community meeting was hosted by our office on October 18th, where several abutters and community members that were in attendance voiced their opinion, um, excuse me, voiced their support and interest for the restaurant. In addition, the applicants went beyond our office's requirements for notifying the community, and they presented their proposal to various neighborhood groups and community stakeholders, including the High Park Main Streets and the High Park Board of Trades. Our office has received no letters of opposition and several letters of support from residents of the community and civic associations. And this includes the High Park Central River Neighborhood Group, the West Fairmount, um, excuse me, the West Fairmount Hill Community Group and the Belknell Hill um, excuse me, the Belknell Family Neighborhood Association. Um, many highlighted the need for more black and brown businesses in our community, the diversity it will bring to the district and how this restaurant uh, will bring more culture to the area and paying homage and uh, to the historical um, honoring of the 54th Regiment. At this time, our office would like to defer judgment to the board. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we will now open up for general testimony in the order that it was received. Kelly Bates, you did message me earlier, so please unmute yourself. Thank you. Yes, I'm here in support of Park 54. I serve on the Ward 18 Democratic Committee and also have an active member of the West uh, Fairmont Neighborhood Hill Association and ran for city council at large. This is exactly the kind of business that we should have in the city and in Hyde Park. And I'm offering my full support. And as you can see today, there is much support and um, hope you'll take that into consideration and expedite it as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you. The next hand I see raised is from Tito Jackson. Mr. Jackson, you can unmute yourself. Thank you very much. Uh, I wanna uh, thank uh, the chair as well as the board for this opportunity uh, to address you today. Um, I, I come to you as a, a resident of the city of Boston, um, an, an avid, uh, ingester of food in, in our city, um, but also um, someone who is a, a friend of uh, Tasha Ho and this uh, leadership team um, here. Uh, very excited about uh, this uh, organization. Um, I was actually um, uh, enlightened by the fact that the 54th Regiment um, from the uh, city of Boston was actually uh, housed in Hyde Park, um, and the name actually pays homage to that. Um, and I'm really excited um, that more uh, Black-owned liquor businesses are, are coming forward, and in particular at this time. So um, I uh, greatly support um, this uh, group and really look forward to dining there. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next hand I see raised is from Arthur Hardy Doubleday. Hi, my name is Arthur Hardy Doubleday. I live at 8 Woodland Ave in Hyde Park. Um, I'm so excited for this restaurant to open. I moved to Hyde Park from Beacon Hill, um, I want to say three years ago. So I remember when Fairmont Grill was open and it was a community center in some respects. It was a nice place to go after a day of work. And since it's closed, it's, leave the, it's left a big void. I, am, I, I cannot wait to spend my hard earned dollars at this restaurant. And I hope, I can't, I can't wait to see how they play out, <clears throat> how they implement um, their, their um, logo. I'm in love with it. So please approve them as soon as possible so I can spend my hard earned money on this small black owned business. Thank you for that. Uh, the next hand I see raised is from Scott Beatty. Mr. Beatty, you may unmute yourself. Sorry about that. Uh, good afternoon, Madam Chairman and members of the board. Um, my name is Scott Beatty, a local High Park resident of 31 years, uh, serve on uh, three local uh, voluntary boards in High Park. I just want to further uh, other local residents' comments. Um, Fairmount Grill 
uh, was a melting pot uh, for our neighborhood. It was Hyde Park's living room. We have missed it sorely. Uh, in one of Hyde Park's, in one of Boston's most diverse neighborhoods, it was such a unique establishment uh, to see uh, people gathering uh, from all walks of life at this location. I'm, I'm absolutely convinced that under the leadership of Sean Hunter, uh, bringing his uh, experience and culinary skills along with Tasha Hull's, um, uh, her expertise and her vision uh, to this spot honoring uh, the 54th Regiment here in Hyde Park. It's very exciting. Uh, also of note, this is a significant uh, contributor will be to the economic and social um, area of Logan Square. It's juxtaposed next to an active performing arts center. It's juxtaposed next to a, an art co-op, several other restaurants. And this is just going to further enhance the dining and cultural experience of this part of Hyde Park. And I am so excited about uh, the prospects of them opening. So please approve very soon. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Beatty. The next hand I see raises from David Hank. You may unmute yourself. Yeah, good afternoon, uh, Madam Chairman, and to all of our friends of uh, Company A of the 54th Massachusetts. Just want to again register our, our firm support. Uh, we represent this uh, local living history, military living history group, and uh, also an element of the Massachusetts uh, Organized Militia and the uh, Army National Guard of the Commonwealth. And uh, just very excited about this. And uh, I wish all the best to uh, Sean and Tosh and look forward to, uh, to uh, taking part in this great initiative. Thank you for that. The next hand I see raised is from Kiana Agbai. Uh, apologies if I mispronounced. No problem. Hi, I'm Kiana Agbai. I'm a five and a half year homeowner here at 47 Oak Street. I live with my husband and my children who are seven and 11. We came here as first time homeowners to Hyde Park and did um, frequently go to the Fairmount Grill that was there before. So we've been patiently awaiting the arrival and we are very excited and support as neighbors and involve community members and for the historical aspect as well. I'm a part of Keep Hyde Park Beautiful. And so it's really exciting to see this come to the neighborhood. I am in support, thank you. Thank you. The next hand I see raises from Helena Tong. Yes, good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Helena Tung and I am the president of Belknell Family Neighborhood Association. And I would like to go on record in support of this uh, restaurant establishment. I am extremely proud and excited about the cultural importance of this particular establishment. Also for it paying homage to the 54th Regiment, but also as being a longtime resident here since 1974. You know, just to see the cultural shift in our community across the diasporas of Asian, Latinx, and African American up to 52%, and seeing that we are bringing in these type of establishments that are reflective of our community. I applaud High Park, uh, High Park Main Street, High Park Board of Trade, Partners, Area Neighborhood Association, but mostly. I applaud Sean Hunter, Tasha Hall for you all bringing this establishment to our community area. Welcome. Thank you for that. The next hand raised I see is from Maria Lattimore. Here Good go. afternoon. My name is Maria Lattimore. I have lived in Hyde Park for 34 years and um, I am so excited about this restaurant coming. I thank the um, Sean and Tasha, thank you, thank you, thank you. I can't wait to eat there. Um, as a longtime resident of Hyde Park, I always go by Cleary and Logan Square and um, lament <laughs> the lack of um, places to eat, the places, uh, places for residents to gather. Um, I, like a lot of people, frequented the Fairmount Grill and sorely missed it. I am so happy that you all are taking this risk, financial risk, and thank you, thank you, thank you for coming to this community. I have already spread the word as soon as I saw that logo in the window. I put out a text to about 30 people say, be on the lookout, it's coming. So I am, I'm just so excited as a foodie to see what you have to offer. <laughs> I look forward to, to talking with you and welcoming you to the community. I'm fully supportive of it. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next hand I see raised is from Tian Simpson. 
Thank you. Hi, my name is Tian Simpson. I am a long-term resident of High Park, been here since 1997. I also happen to work um, in High Park as director of High Park Main Street. I just wanted to voice my support to Park 54th. Um, thank you, Tasha and Sean for being, um, for being so forthcoming with the community in terms of how you want to be a part of the community. Um, Tasha is a High Park resident. She lives right down the street from the restaurant. So she is even more vested in, into the business. Um, we are lacking sit down restaurants in our neighborhood. And um, the Fairmont Grill was closed since August of 19, I mean, of 2019. So it's been a void in that area of High Park for a very long time. Um, like everybody else, I am excited. Um, everybody I have spoken to are very excited. Even the businesses surrounding the restaurant are excited because they know that from the patrons of the restaurant will be spilling out and visiting the um, businesses across the street and down the street. So um, as a resident, I fully support 110% of this um, business opening up and getting their liquor license. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next hand I see raised is from M. Corbin. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm a resident of High Park. I'm really excited about this restaurant. I've been here for a few years. And yes, I do miss Fairmont Grill. Um, it was the chairs of High Park. And I feel like um, this new restaurant is going to be um, the same thing. I'm hoping, um, I'm hoping that it's open sooner. Um, I actually went to high school with Tasha. So I'm, <laughs> hi, Tasha. I'm so excited to get this started. And um, High Park is a family oriented neighborhood. And I like the concept of supporting the 54th Regiment. So I'm excited to get it started. So I'm in full support of it. Thank you. And could you just state your name for the record? Michelle Corbin. Michelle, thank you very much. And yeah. uh, the last hand I see raised is from Melanie Day. Hello, everyone. And good morning to all on this call. I just want to say that Tasha and Sean will bring a great, a great, um, great revenue to our community because they are also, they are also will be bringing other, other patrons from other areas of the, of the city, and maybe out of town. But they were gonna, they will also this, this make our, our town shine and bring more revenue in our town because our businesses are not doing well. So I just hope that um, that things will work out and that this will be a great, great revenue to our town as well as bring unity. They are just, um, I also did, I mean, I, my name is Melanie. I am a neighborhood leader with um, High Park Central River. I did a block party last year and Tasha made the street shine. She started off with, her, with the nice Hawaiian audience that I, that I, that I, um, that I, that I put together as the theme. And I just think that Tasha is just so professional with her ways and the things that she do. She is just a great person that would definitely make High Park shine. Thank you, Tasha and Sean. I look forward to Park 254 as a veteran of the army. Thank you, bye-bye. Thank you very much. I don't see any additional hands raised. Are there any additional individuals who have not yet testified who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this matter under advisement. The board will be taking a brief five minute recess in between uh, this and the next item. We will continue with item number 21 in five minutes. That will be at 12, 18 PM. Thank you. Thank you everybody for bearing with us. Uh, we will now continue with item number 21 on today's agenda. Now calling Columbus Corporation doing business as Giacomo's Restaurant located at 431 Columbus Ave. Holder of a common victual or seven day wines and malt beverages with liqueurs license has petitioned to transfer the license from the above to Casa Giacomo's LLC doing business as Giacomo's Restaurant at the same location. Irakli Gogatidzi, manager, 11.30 p.m. closing hour. Secondly, has petitioned to pledge the license and inventory to Eagle Bank. 
Attorney Benjamin Levin. Attorney Levin. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for the time today. Um, Marockley is here with me to answer any questions that you may have as well. Uh, this is a transfer of, a, of an existing license. The establishment at Giacomo's has been in existence for a long time. Uh, our clients are operators in the neighborhood, operators in the city. Iraqli has a, a vast amount of experience operating similar establishments and will operate this at a similar capacity. Um, there is a, a pledge of the license to Eagle Bank as there will be a loan as part of this. And the establishment in and of itself will stay remarkably the same. There'll be some minor updating, but largely operated in the same capacity that it has been for a long time. Attorney, is your client here, the manager of record? Yes, he is. Could you put his camera on, please? I believe it is. Good afternoon, all. Thank you. Um, are you already a sworn manager of record by this board or no? No. Okay. Are you a citizen? Yes. Are you a resident of Massachusetts? Yes, I am. Do you have experience in the food and beverage industry? Yes, I do. Are you familiar with the rules and regulations of this board, the ABCC, and the laws of the Commonwealth as they pertain to the sale and service of alcohol? Yes, I am. Thank you very much. I don't have any questions. Commissioner Curran or Commissioner Saxon, do you? I do not. Thank you. I don't either. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Good afternoon, Madam of the Chair, members of the board. Anna Calderon from Councillor Flink's office. The councillor would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any additional individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You Calling item 22, Donna Temple LLC, doing business as Stoddard's Fine Food and Ale, located at 48 to 50 Temple Place. Holder of a common vigil or seven day all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to transfer the license and the location from the above to Real House Oyster Bar Seaport LLC, doing business as Real House Oyster Bar, located at 10 Waterside Drive, Boston. Premise consisting of approximately 1,857 square feet on ground floor in one main room with bar area, bar dining area, and chef bar, kitchen, storage, and restrooms located to left of bar and dining areas. Main entrance located on end of pier with one additional entrance exit to right of bar and dining area, and one additional entrance exit located at rear off bar and dining area. Three annual outdoor patios consisting of approximately 1,058 square feet located on private property, same hours. Additionally, applicant seeks to remove existing conditions on prior licensee. Thomas Baird Ferguson, manager, closing hour 1 a.m., attorney William Burke. Attorney Burke. Good day, Mr. Green, and good afternoon to uh, the chair and the commissioners. Um, I'm representing uh, the Real House Oyster. On the line with me are Charlie Larner, who is a principal, and uh, as well as Tommy Ferguson who is our proposed manager of record. Mr. Ferguson is a US citizen, Massachusetts resident, has significant experience in the restaurant industry and is familiar with the laws of the Commonwealth as well as with the rules and regulations of the board and the ABCC. Um, the proposal is uh, for a uh, transfer of an existing license from downtown to the waterfront. Uh, this is a, a, re a proposed restaurant that's going to be specializing in oysters and seafood. We're requesting a 1 o'clock a.m. closing hour for the indoor portion and a 10 p.m. closing for the outdoor patio areas. Uh, this concept is proposed by the Navy Yard Hospitality Group and its owner and operator was Charlie Larner, as I said. He has significant experience operating successful restaurants on the water in multiple Boston locations, including Pier 6 in Charlestown, Real House in East Boston, as well as a Real House at Marina Bay in Quincy. Mr. Larner uh, has significant experience operating restaurants in mixed-use developments with residential neighbors and is very sensitive to the quality of life of the residents. And we're also uh, happy to report that the Navy uh, Yard Hospitality Group will continue with its practice of having its two shuttle boats provide free transit across the harbor between Charlestown, East Boston, and the Seaport, not only for our patrons, but for any members of the public that wish. 
Uh, that's our, our view, in our view, helps to uh, bring uh, folks together, activate and bring together the waterfront neighborhoods. Um, as the board is aware, we have made, uh, we had originally had hearings up. We voluntarily uh, continued the hearing a couple of times in order to uh, continue discussions with the neighborhood and elected officials. Uh, we have uh, had a separate uh, abutters meeting in accordance with all the mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services requirements, uh, including putting flyers out to all three, all about us in the 300 foot radius. Subsequently, uh, Council President Flynn and his office hosted a second abutters meeting to continue discussing the proposal. We've worked with uh, closely with Council President Flynn, the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Development Services and the abutters, as well as the Fort, Ho Fort Point Neighborhood Association to develop the proposal and, and address concerns. We respectfully submit there's a public need for the license in this location and specifically for this type of concept. Uh, the seaport has seen a, a large rise in residential population and we hope to get back to a point where they're gonna have a lot more workers coming in uh, and as well has had an increase in businesses in the area. This uh, significant increase demonstrates a need for uh, additional licenses for the public to use. Uh, the concept is one of a small restaurant for oysters and seafood. It's not a big steakhouse. It's not a big seafood place. It's really kind of unique. And, and we think it would fit in nicely and serve as a hub for communications between all the residents and employees in the area. It's a locally owned restaurant. And, uh, and we believe that uh, uh, near the end of the uh, uh, pandemic, as I said, we'll see more folks coming back into their offices, being able to, uh, to utilize the, the uh, premises. Finally, uh, given Mr. Larner's demonstrated experience in successfully operating neighborhood restaurants in Boston, there's no question as to the character and fitness of the applicant here. We understand that the Fort Point Channel Neighborhood Association has concern about chapter 91 and our ability to utilize the outdoor space, given the proximity to the uh, Harbor Walk. Uh, this applicant has worked closely with the owner of the property to ensure compliance with chapter 91. We will submit to the board a copy of the waterway license number 11907 between the Department of Environmental Protection and the property owner. Special condition 26 of that states specifically that it does not prohibit use of outdoor open spaces for outdoor seating proximate to restaurants, provided they don't obstruct public passages. This public, uh, uh, this allows for any enclosure uh, as well of the same, as long as it doesn't unreasonably interfere with public pedestrian use of the remainder uh, of the sidewalks, plazas and other exterior spaces. The architect we have uh, has prepared the proposed layout of the patio to ensure compliance with the requirements of the agreement and to ensure the general public continues to have access to the harbor walk. We will continue working with the property owner and the DEP to ensure compliance and access, but respectfully submitted, it's not the place of the Fort Point Neighborhood Association, no matter how well intended, to interpret or enforce Chapter 91. And further, while we appreciate the collaboration with the Fort Point Neighborhood Association, this location is in the seaport, not Fort Point Channel, and it's not actually within the, the, that association's jurisdiction. The applicant will again continue to work with the property owner and the DEP to ensure compliance. That will be something that will occur after, we hope, the issuance of, uh, of uh, your permission for this transfer that we propose. Doing it otherwise, putting it to the, uh, to the DEP is putting the cart before the horse. Um, uh, we have uh, in this uh, proposal, we propose we're going to have entertainment, which will be non-live background music, both indoors and outdoors. Patio background music is going to cease at 10 p.m. Patio background music will adhere to the city's, will adhere to the city's 70 decibel level. Uh, storage of, tra of trash and trash issues are, again, as I understand, a concern of the uh, F. P and A. Uh, trash will be transported on a daily basis from the licensed premises to the 50 Liberty condominium in airtight, rodent proof, and insect proof containers. Trash will be transported to the designated space on a daily basis and will be part of the existing trash pickup service 
at 450 Liberty condominiums, trash will not be stored outside the licensed premises. Um, the uh, uh, on noise control patio and dispersal issues, let me just state that our proposed uh, entertainment is limited to non-live music, as I stated. Staff of the license will monitor the patio as well as the indoors to ensure that any background music is in compliance with noise ordinances and also ensure that patrons are not behaving in a way that will create any disturbances. The licensee has significant experience in operating these uh, restaurants and mixed use buildings, as I've said before. We have not had any complaints by residents of the places where we have other businesses with respect to noise. And I'm while jump, uh, I'm just going to jump in, Attorney Burke, because this is not a hearing for entertainment, and we will be hearing those issues separately. And I, I imagine the Neighborhood Association is going to raise those issues. I want to ask respectfully that everyone um, refrains from discussing things about entertainment at this lot, lot, um, late hour in the hearing and just focus on the, the actual application before us. So, Would yes, you like so to wrap just, up. Go ahead. Uh, I mean, uh, we, we're just going to, you know, the staff will physically monitor dispersal of patrons after the 10 p.m. closing on the on the patio. We'll we'll, we'll monitor and disperse uh, patrons afterwards, uh, and, and all of the patio furniture, including chairs, tables, and other fixtures, will be secured uh, in an orderly and organized manner. Um, I'd be okay. happy to address any other concerns you may have, Madam Chair. Thank you. How many? Um seats will there be on the, the as you described three annual outdoor patios i'm sorry how much seating will be outside well there it's uh, capacity is a, is is a, appears to be 60 for the patio area and 60 for the interior that's of course subject to final approval by isd and the and the bfd okay um let's see i did have another question uh, the description says the applicant is seeking to remove existing conditions on the prior license. Could you quickly uh, summarize that for me, what that means? I'm sorry, I can't, I, I'm having trouble hearing you. The description says the applicant is seeking to remove existing conditions on the prior license. I don't know uh, what those are off the top of my head. I, and and I don't, I don't understand that there are any others, but uh, Mr. Liner, uh, who is on the call, I believe. Okay. Madam, Madam Chair, it's Charlie, how are you? Good, how are uh, you? The existing conditions uh, are regards to the license, uh, the previous license, uh, because of the pandemic, owed an outstanding debt to uh, a distributor, a liquor distributor who went okay. bankrupt. And so they don't know how to pay because the company went bankrupt and there was no way to pay. So that was uh, one of the existing conditions that we wanted removed um, on this license. Okay, I'll have to dig a little bit into that. I'm not familiar how we would remove a condition having to do with money owed, but um, I'll take a look at that. So it's, it's not, you're not referring to anything about limitations on hours or anything like no. that? No, okay. it just it, it strictly had to do with the fact that a distributor went bankrupt and they didn't know how to pay the final bill to the distributor. Uh, so we needed your assistance with how to resolve that. Okay. I'm going to turn it over to my fellow commissioners who have been waiting patiently. Commissioner Curran, Commissioner Saxon, do you have any questions? I do not. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Yes, good morning, Madam Chair, uh, members of the board, Molly Griffin from the Office of Neighborhood Services. Again, speaking on behalf of my colleague, Haley Dillon, um, our office would like to defer to the board's judgment at this time. Uh, Haley did run that initial abutters meeting. I'm sorry, I don't know the date off the top of my head of it. I can get that, though. And um, she just wanted to recognize the applicant um, has continued to work with the community to work towards a resolution with them, and we ask that they continue to do so. Thank you. Good afternoon, Madam of the Chair, members of the board, Anna Calderon from Councillor Flink's office. The councillor would like to go on record in support based on a good community process and good faith compromises on both sides with the neighbors. The applicant worked with our office to hold a community meeting with the neighbors, abutters, and members of the Civic Association. Over the last several weeks, 
the proponent has adjusted their operation hours and plans according to resident feedback during the community process. The counselor respectfully requests that the proponent continue to work closely with neighbors on quality of life issues and other concerns moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. Madam uh, Chair. Oh, sorry, Danny. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, Alicia Payne here on behalf of Councillor Flaherty. I wish to go on record and support as well and just want to echo uh, the remarks of Councillor Flynn's office. Thank you. Thank you. Are there additional elected officials or their representatives who would like to testify before you open for general testimony? Great. I do see a hand raised from Tom Reddy. Hey, thanks, Mr. Green. Uh, Tom Reddy, uh, I'm a resident uh, on Wormwood Street and a member of FPNA, the Neighborhood Association, recognized by the city that uh, covers the South Boston waterfront. Uh, we, we appreciate the applicants. Um, flexibility in meeting multiple times um, with our neighbors and making adjustments to their operating plan and we're in full support of them opening uh, and operating inside. Um, the property as stated is under the jur jurisdiction of the Chapter 91 Public Waterways Act. We do believe there's discrepancies with the existing license. Uh, the Mass DEP um, uh, chairman actually attended the chief, uh, I'm sorry, the Mass DEP Waterways Chief actually attended the last abutters meeting uh, and made comments to the effect, to the point that uh, he believes uh, they need to apply to his office uh, so that those discrepancies uh, can be sorted out. Uh, we would therefore request that the, uh, that the, that the board uh, would defer the licensing decision on the outside operations until that chapter 91 process completes. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any additional individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I wasn't able to get my hand up in time. This is Norm Lind. No worries. Go ahead. Thank you very much. I appreciate the time. Um, my name is Norm Lind. I'm resident at uh, 50 Liberty Drive. I am the president of the Board of Trustees mm -hmm. at 50 Liberty Drive. Um, we greatly appreciate the work that uh, Charlie has done with us in trying to resolve some of the issues that we had. Um, the very first abutters meeting we had was rather confusing because nobody was running it except for the attorney uh, that was uh, that was representing the uh, the applicant. Uh, we were greatly appreciated uh, Councillor Flynn stepping in, doing a second abutters meeting for us, which was uh, which was uh, very good, and that um, the um, applicant was well prepared for. We do agree completely with uh, what Tom Reddy is saying, totally in support of his letter and his comments, that um, we approve, we appreciate them working with us. We like the 1 uh, a.m. close indoor, the 10 p.m. close outdoor. We believe there are questions as far as where the outdoor seating should be. And as Tom said, um, the representative from DEP was at the meeting and uh, expressed an interest in having further discussions about that. Um, as far as garbage goes, the storage of 50 Liberty, uh, that's an ongoing issue that we'll continue to discuss, but it should not be a problem in any way. Um, and we are in support of the overall project with the reservations that, uh, that Tom raised. And we feel that Tom did a nice job of representing our neighborhood as well as, uh, as his uh, in the discussions. We're very closely with him and we appreciate the help from everybody involved. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to provide additional testimony on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Green. Item number 23 has been withdrawn by the applicant. Now calling item 24 A and R Variety Store Inc. doing business as Roslindale Variety Store located at 4254 Washington Street has applied for a retail package store wines and malt beverages license to be exercised on the above in one room on first floor with entrance in front and emergency exit in rear consisting of 1000 square feet storage in basement. Manager Anderson Diaz, closing time 11 p.m. Attorney Carolyn Conway. Attorney Conway. Good afternoon, members of the board and also Attorney Green. Uh, with me today is Anderson Diaz, who is the sole owner of a &R Variety, Inc., and is also the proposed manager of record. To give you a little background, uh, Mr. Diaz, uh, four, seven years ago, uh, started the Roslindale Barbershop, and two years ago, uh, which basically became a, a local gathering Place and he had the um, opportunity to purchase uh, a 
kind of failing convenience store next door in October of 2020. Uh, he has done everything he can to, um, he's upgraded the store. And again, the store has also turned into a, uh, a, com a community place where if you need somebody to, uh, you know, towel your bathroom, they, this is the place to go get it. He's arranged for people, people to work at the parking garage. And many members of the community have requested that he get beer and wine um, in the convenience store. As you can tell from the, the floor plan that you have, the beer and wine we're proposing will take up between 10 to 15% of the store. This is something that we've been working on for many, many months. We talked to people in the community, what they wanted, what exactly needed to be done. And this is what the community has asked us to do. I have previously, um, Attorney Green knows, I sent you video support, little vignettes that we've, we've we've submitted of people in the community who are in support. And as you can see, Mr. Tiaz is, is there that he also has members of the community there. You can see from the video vignettes and the, the support that we have, that we have a wide range of uh, community support for this from young younger people all the way to elderly, all of whom are from the local neighborhood. They're very supportive of Mr. Diaz and his um, efforts to come into Roslindale and to upgrade the whole neighborhood. And they're looking forward to, um, to him adding this into, into the store to just expand his offerings. He is a citizen of the United States and a resident of Roslindale, of, of, of Commonwealth, uh, excuse me, he's a resident of the Commonwealth. He does not have on hands experience with the sale of alcoholic beverages, but over the last several months, uh, he's been going over with me what those rules are. Uh, and he is now uh, pretty familiar, or he is familiar with the, um, the regulations of not only this board and the ABCC and also the statutes of the Commonwealth. Um, he, quickly, he does have several on, people. Is your client here? Oh, he I, is. I, I can I, see I, him. I can't. But we don't know who he is. So could you ask Anderson, him raise to, your hand, please. Anderson, can you raise your hand? Up. If he speaks up, he'll come up on the screen. Yep, Anderson, you I need to, there, there he is. is. He, he just Thank raised you. his hand. Gotcha, okay, you can continue. Okay, well, as I said, we, we've, we, we've gone through exactly what we believe that the neighborhood wants and needs in this area. There, are, there is not a, a store uh, nearby that serves alcoholic beverages. And as I said, we're looking to just take over 10 to 15% of the store to put the beer and wine in so that we can serve the public need that's there. Um, Mr. Anderson has his, his hands raised and I'll, I'll, let him, I'll let him speak for himself. As I said, I know he has customers there and we have also submitted a lot of support in the form of these little vi video vignettes. We had it. Uh, uh, let me just one, just one more thing. Sorry, um, we we have had we had a, you know an extensive uh, butters meeting and the butter. Uh, we had a lot of support during that, and we believe that, as I said, this is just the ongoing upgrade in Roslindale, and Mr. Diaz is an important part of it. Anderson, you're going to have to unmute yourself. Anderson, are Hi. you listening? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, yes we can I'm hear gonna you. Ask you. I'm gonna ask you a couple of questions. Are you a citizen? Yes, I am. Are you a resident of the Commonwealth? Yes, I am. And do you have experience in the food and beverage industry? Um, not, not really. Okay, um, your attorney did describe um, how you're familiarizing yourself with the rules and regulations of the board and the ABCC and the laws of the Commonwealth as they pertain to the sale and service of alcohol. Um, yeah. Have you been operating the store for a while? Yeah, for I would say 15 months since October 20, 2020. Okay. Okay. Um, is there anything you would like to add? Otherwise, I'm going to ask my fellow commissioners um, she, questions. She pretty much, yeah, she pretty much she said everything. Okay. Uh, like, you know, it's, <clears throat> and okay. you have the, yeah, and you have the videos of support, right? Yes. Yes, we received yeah, the videos. It's like, been added to the file and shared with with the board. Yeah. Th yeah. Thank you. I had like fifteen, like around fifteen to seventeen people earlier here. They were here earlier, waiting for you know, 
but it, unfortunately, it took you guys a little bit too long. It's like two hours because they were ready for 10 o'clock. So I only have like probably like six of them. Oh, that's great. I, we see yeah. them there. That's unique. And I love that. Yeah. And um, most of them, most of them don't know how to use this, you know, new thing like Zoom and stuff. You know, how that was on channel two. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you, you want to say something? Could I make okay, a... before, before we get um, to them, before we okay. get to them, I just want to ask the commissioners, do they have any questions for the attorney or the, um, or Mr. Diaz? I don't have any questions, thank you. Okay, we, and we appreciate everyone who's there in support of you. If they would just like to give their name for the record and yes. state that they're in support, we could... My name's Paul Buckley. Uh, I've lived here all my life. I'm 62 years old. And these are good people, and they're bringing back the old mom and pop stores. And I hope you help them out. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. My name is Derek Montgomery. I'm a longtime resident of Rosendale, and I think it will be a great addition to the neighborhood if he was to get a beer and wine license. Well, say, sir. Go ahead. And I'm Dory Coddington, and he's a good guy. He deserves. <laughs> great. Thank you. Uh, are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Good morning, members of the board. My name Hello. is Lou from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Um, we had an abundance meeting for 425 for Washington Street, and it was pretty split. Um, they had a huge group of supporters, but they also had a group of opposition who were from the liquor store further down the street. Um, specifically, let me see. They also sent in letters of, their letters of support and a petition of opposition. So I'm not too sure how many are directed letters to this store and who aren't. And within the community that are directed letters, there was agreement, there was an agreement made with Diaz that there would be no signs, no neon signs on the storefront directly advertising alcohol. Yes, we do agree to that. Great, thank you. Any other uh, elected officials or their representatives who would like to testify on this matter? Okay, I see a hand raised from Uma, Uma Vadher. Yes, hi, can you hear me okay? We can hear you. Yes, good afternoon, Madam Chair and Board. Uh, this is Uma Vade, and I am the owner of Rosendale Liquors, and we are located right across the Rosendale Variety Store. It's within a minute walk. Um, so I would like to strongly oppose to provide another beer and wine li license because we are already in this business, and we are just right across, like two blocks down, then there is Rosendale Variety Store. And I would say it's not only just Roslindale Liquors is nearby, but there are a couple of other liquor stores within the walkable distance to Roslindale Variety Store. So I strongly would like to request to the board to revisit the location uh, before making any decision and see whether there is a need, is there any public need for a new beer and wine licensing while there is already a couple of liquor stores within a few blocks down. Uh, I know the COVID has made everybody's life upside down and especially in the businesses. So I, I also request to support existing business as well. And I want to register my hopes for this new beer and wine licensing. Thank you. The next hand raised I see is from Pavan. If you could just please uh, identify yourself and unmute yourself. Yeah, this is a Pavan and uh, just uh, I'm here uh, representing from the uh, uh, the Roslingdale Small Business Group. And the thing is that uh, uh, the, the, I just want to add to to uh, the uh, Mrs. Conway that when there are the couple of there are couple of store as the woman says about the is even two store down. So there are few store and existing competition that that makes the businesses the uh, you know and also the in order to support uh, opposition that there are hundred petition has been signed and sent it to the. Uh, the, uh, the service of neighborhood and also if you would like, I'm, I'm not sure the chairman and the board member and has received those opposition, the petitions for the more than 100 members in order to opposing this one. So on only pandemics like also uh, ruin the business and in addition to adding this business is also killing the existing business. This is not a survival mode of the existing business. So 
uh, that also uh, would like to or the record to opposing this uh, uh, proposal for these uh, uh, licenses. Thank you. The next hand I see raises from Sharad Vader. Uh, thank you so much for giving this opportunity. Uh, um, I would like to, with your kind permission, I would like to share my screen so that I can share some perspective so board member can understand uh, in a big picture. We do not allow shared screen during these meetings, but you can submit anything that you would like shared with the board um, by emailing it to licensingboard at boston.gov. We'll make sure it's placed on the file and shared with all the commissioners. That's fair, that's fine. Uh, the reason is that, you know, I wanted to, uh, I took some pictures and just wanted to share so that everybody can understand that, you know, uh, right from one block uh, from the Rosalind Wright store, there's a Rick store right there. Uh, it, it's barely 300 feet there. So if I put it in perspective, a person can take a breath and before he is ready to take another breath, there is another liquor store right there and it serves full alcohol, all the beer and liquor, wine, and it got, it's, it got good varieties there. Uh, so, uh, and there are a bunch of other stores within the community. If, if anybody can do the Google search, Google map, they can find there are a bunch of stores there and, and people have excess of the alcohol right there. And there is no need of another additional portal of the alcoholic beverages in this community. Uh, well, people can say that, hey, I need to be a one-stop a place where I'm just serving the small portion of the alcohol, but this is just stepping stone into it and there is no regulation how much they can increase or decrease the alcohol there within that small place. Uh, and in, there is a small limitation. There is a limitation within within that small place, only certain things can be done. There is hardly space to walk. And, and there is no need of the uh, alcohol beverages where there are several porters right there to get the alcoholic beverages. Um, so I, I strongly believe that, yeah, there is there could be some uh, public support, but when board of members look at, at the need of uh, public need, there is no public need. Thank you so much. Thank you. I don't see any additional hands raised. Are there any? Uh, oh, I do see a hand raised from Patrick. Could you please identify yourself? Hello, Patrick here. I'm a, I am live at uh, Washington Street and I'm a regular customer at Rosalind Liquors. And uh, I like the location of the store as I can find a, a parking place right in front of the store or right in front of the family dollar or at the parking lot to, near the village market. So it's a really convenient place for any person who is going in a car or who is traveling from other place to buy the liquors. And uh, as far as the location of the Rosanet Variety Market is concerned, as uh, it's a busy street and it's at an intersection. So it will create a more chaos in that uh, and more problem for the parking at that area. And uh, I don't uh, have any like uh, I don't find any need to have another liquor store in my locality as I'm already happy with the service provided by the Rosina Liquors. And uh, that's pretty much it. I just, uh, I would like to register that uh, I am not in the favor of uh, another liquor store or a beer and wine store in the locality because I'm happy with Rosina Liquors. Their variety collection is a really nice one. So that's pretty much it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I do not see any additional hands raised. Is there anyone who has not yet testified who would like to testify on this matter? Hello? Hang on hello? a second. I, I, uh, hang on, I see a hand raised. Mike invests. Hey, hello. My name is uh, Michael Arias. I'm a longtime resident of Rosendale. Um, I am in support of Rosendale Variety of acquiring their license to sell beer and wine. I just want to say that it's in a great position to sell and provide a further need of beer and wine because it is in a busy section of Rosendale. I just also want to say that um, I understand Rosendale's um, input. And I also just want to say that I've been living in Rosendale for a very long time. And um, I haven't, I, I didn't really see Rosendale, lo, lo, uh, Rosendale Liquors location offer such a convenience because I actually didn't find out about it. You actually have to Google it to find it or walk down the street, but um, it is down the street from Rosna Variety, but it's like uh, two blocks away, but that's the only other liquor store that I see. And they sell their own variety of liquors and, um, you know, hard liquor and such, but that's all the input I want to say. 
Thank you. Are there any additional individuals who would like to testify who have not yet done so on this matter? Uh, yes, the iPhone just unmuted yourself. Are you trying to testify on this matter? Yes, hello. Yes, can you please identify yourself? Yes, hi, uh, my name is Arison Villar. I live in the area. Um, I've been going to this place. This is a really nice place, nice people, and a um, really good area. I didn't see no leak on around it, and um, they're doing pretty good. This, this is a pretty good place. I hope so he can get it. Thank you. Uh, I see no further hands raised. Are there any additional individuals who would like to testify on this matter? If I just may respond just just quickly, um, I believe that yes, the board will say that the people that we have put forth are the people who are actually the customers and actually the uh, the neighborhood uh, that are in support. Uh, as I said, it, it's a it's a very small request. It's not intended to be become a liquor store. It's intended to be able to be a true convenience store and to serve the neighborhood, the people who shop there. Thank you, Attorney Conway. I don't see any further requests to testify, so the board will take this matter under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Now calling item you, 20. Uh, if everyone could, please. No, I just want to say thank you so much for your oh. time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now calling item 25, Jumbo Oriental LLC, <laughs> doing business as Jumbo Seafood, located at 5 to 9 Hudson Street has applied for a common vigil or seven day all alcoholic beverages license to be exercised on the above. The premise has 2,700 square feet, first floor restaurant with a basement for storage, separate kitchen from dining area seating for 74. There are two restrooms. Manager, Kenneth Lung, closing time 3 a.m. Attorney Russell Chin. Attorney Chin. Yes, good afternoon. Um, <clears throat> thank you very much for your time today. I'm here representing Oriental uh, Chumbo uh, Oriental LLC. Uh, the two managers are also here with me, Kenneth Lim and Kathy Chan. Uh, this is a, a family owned and operated business. And they also own the location, which is a, a condominium building and their space is on the first floor and part of the basement. <clears throat> uh, we have um, we have provided an application and we're looking simply to to continue uh, the hours of operation and uh, the uh, delivery of alcohol beverages at the location. Uh, the, the restaurant is a, a sit down restaurant also with takeout, but there's no separate lounge, there's no separate bar. So the delivery of alcohol would be at the tables where people are dining. Just want to point that out. Um, Mr. Leung and Ms. Chan have many, many years of experience operating a restaurant full service with a, with a liquor license. They were at this location originally back in the 1990s. They started the original Jumbo Seafood there. And they've been operating the Jumbo Seafood in Newton uh, for many decades. They intend to leave the uh, Newton uh, restaurant and to go back to Chinatown and operate the restaurant on Hudson Street. So they're committed to doing that. And uh, we've met with, um, <clears throat> on a number of occasions with uh, various uh, community organizations. We met with the uh, Chinatown Neighborhood Council in October, the uh, Chinatown Residents Association in November, and the um, Office of Neighborhood Services in January. Uh, my understanding is that a number of letters have been submitted in support and that um, those that we have received uh, opposition from, we have also met privately with uh, on a number of occasions at their request. And uh, those, we believe the, that if there's opposition, it would be from other uh, condominium owners who are in the same building, as opposed to the community at large. Jumbo Seafood, if you're not familiar with it, is, is truly a, a cornerstone restaurant in Chinatown. It's been there for many decades. And it's an important, uh, it's an important establishment that with these owners committed to reopening there. I mean, it, it shows their dedication to the community. It shows their investment, their belief 
in, in doing the right thing for the community. Uh, so many restaurants are closing in Chinatown uh, that it's important to recognize when owners of, a, of an establishment are willing to come back in, do what it takes, uh, reinvest money, improve the, improve the uh, location, um, and, and make sure that it's a good member of the community. Um, so with that, I will uh, open it to your questions. Sorry, thank you. I don't have any questions at this time. I reserve my right for afterwards. Commissioner Curran, Commissioner Saxon. I don't, thank you. Uh, same for me, thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Yes. Uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Molly Griffin from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. We did host an abutters meeting on January 11th where the applicants presented their proposal, um, answered questions and concerns from neighbors. Um, there was a mixture. There was a lot of support at the meeting. There was some opposition from neighbors within the building. Um, at this time, I have received 15 letters of support um which i have forwarded over to the board just to make sure you guys have those as well and one letter of opposition from the china chinatown residents association which i believe the board also has at this time our office would like to defer to the board's judgment on this matter thank you thank you are there any other elected officials or their representatives who would like to testify before we open to general testimony good afternoon madam of the chair members of the board anna calderon from councillor flink's office the councilor would like to go on record in, op in opposition based on a strong opposition from neighbors and the community groups like the Chinatown Resident Association. Many neighbors and residents of the building has expressed concern regarding hours of operation and closing time, public health and pe pest control, and other safety and quality of life issues. Councilor Flynn shares these concerns and is opposed. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, Alicia Payne here on behalf of Councillor Flaherty, which need to go on in record, uh, sorry, on record in opposition as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Turning to general testimony, the first hand I see raised is from Stefano Monteroso. You may unmute yourself. Uh, Stefano Monteroso. Okay, moving on. The next hand I see, oh, go ahead. Can you unmute yourself? You're still on mute. Uh, we're still on mute. We'll try to come back to you. All right, the next hand I see raised is from Debbie Ho. Good afternoon, Chairman um, and, and Madam Chair. My name is Debbie Ho. I'm from Chinatown Main Street. I'm the executive director there. And we'd like to go on record that we, um, although we know that there are many, has been many issues from the prior owner of the business, uh, we're in support of the uh, business um, opening to the new owners. Um, the issue, the health issues, were all, had been an issue um, during the time of during the, uh, I guess, when this uh, prior owner was in business. Um, and and uh, during the abutters meeting that I attended, um, I did not hear um, that a noise issue was a, a problem. And so we hope that uh, moving forward, um, you know, business are hurting here in Chinatown. Um, Kathy and um, Kenny Leung are happy to come back into this community to uh, foster and to try to sustain our neighborhood and our culture in in Chinatown. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thank you. Before we go back to uh, the rest of the testimony, I just wanna make sure that Jeremy Joyce covers the manager of record questions. I believe we, we skipped that. So um, Mr. Yes, Leung. Yes, sorry. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Mr. Um, Leung, the manager of record. I just wanna get on the record the four manager of record questions. Um, are you a citizen? Can you unmute yourself? Mr. Leung, are you able to unmute yourself? I just asked you to unmute. Yes. Can there you hear me? Yep. Yes. Are you a citizen? Yes, yes, I am. Are you a resident of the Commonwealth? Yes, I am. Are you experienced in the food and beverage industry? 
Yes, I yes, are you familiar with the rules and regulations of this board, the ABCC, and the laws of the Commonwealth as they pertain to the sale and service of alcohol? Yes, I do. 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 Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I'm just going to respectfully ask as we move into our third hour of the hearing, if you have submitted your testimony in writing, um, that you just state your name and record, name and address for the record. We have received those emails, but I don't want to take anyone's take away the opportunity for anyone who has not had an opportunity to submit something in writing. Thank you. The next hand I see raised is from Kurt Walter. Uh, good afternoon, Madam Chairman and members of the board. My name is Kurt Walter, and I'm here to offer my enthusiastic support for Jumbo Seafood. I grew up in the area, and my family has a documented in history dating back to the 1930s. My grandmother, Ruby Fu, owned and operated a world-famous restaurant bearing her name on that very street. Historically, I have witnessed over my lifetime both the marginalization and partition as the, in the area we know as Chinatown. The Asian community has always been marginalized and ignored, but now we're fighting for its very life. The pandemic has had a catastrophic effect on Boston Chinatown and its businesses. The streets are like a ghost town and many businesses have permanently closed. Uh, restaurants and family owned businesses uh, like Jumbo will always been at the core of the community offering both financial mobility as well as safe cultural gathering spaces. I've known Ken and Kathy for over 25 years and they are attempting to turn the tide on this trend by returning to their roots and reinvesting in the neighborhood. Not only will they be creating jobs, but I believe a successful jumble can serve as a catalyst for other businesses to follow suit and hopefully bring much needed revenue back to the area. Considering uh, the rise of Asian anti-Asian anti sentiment that we're seeing, the availability of a safe and familiar meeting place, places and businesses serving the community has never been more important. Restaurants has all, have always been central to Asian culture, welcoming all races, you know, colors, types, everything, bonding over a good meal and a drink. Sadly, you know, given the, the current hateful climate, Welcoming and safe spaces are needed for people of Asian descent. Uh, given the shrinking Chinatown, uh, there are very few alternatives where a person can enjoy a drink with their meal. Jumbo has served as a long time after work meeting places for many other Chinese restaurant workers who have to go out of the community into the suburbs and want to have a drink and enjoy a good meal when they come home. Uh, I think a 2 a.m. license and a full liquor license is paramount to their success in this. Uh, while I truly can sympathize with their neighbors' concerns, I believe that Jumbo and Ken and Kathy will do everything in their power to rectify these issues. The previous owner was responsible for, for these transgressions, and he is no longer affiliated with the business. But I think, you know, this is much uh, larger than a simple quality of life complaints. Uh, th these tenants made a ch conscious choice to move into an area that is historically been mostly dominated by food uh, uh, related industries uh, and, and as well as its own prevailing cultural norms. But the fact remains that Chinatown is in life, on life support and it needs help. I believe that Ken and Kathy can breathe life back into the neighborhood and once again attract a wide and diverse client base. The original restaurant was considered by many to be a destination dining experience, a community meeting space, and I believe they can continue that tradition. They enjoyed great success in the original Jumbo, uh, winning multiple Best of Bostons, many accolades in the press. And uh, I think to truly compete and, 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 and be successful, uh, you know, please grant them this license. I thank you for your time. Thank you. The next hand I see raised is from a phone number that ends in the digits 0842. Can you please identify yourself and unmute? Again, that's a phone number ending in 0842. Okay, the next hand that I see raised is from Elaine Sang. Hi. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Please identify yourself. Okay. Yes, my name is Ontario Gossage. Um, and so, uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair. Thank you for the opportunity to address the board. So I own a condo with seven husbands with my wife, and we live on the fourth floor above the applicant's restaurant. We are opposed to the liquor hours due to the late night hours. Uh, this is a building in which a majority of the condo are occupied by owners. The building also has families with children now. The restaurant has created a quality of life issues, including pests, roaches, uh, 
mice, as well as noise issues, air quality issues like tests with kitchen odors, and in some cases, restaurant workers and contractors smoking tobacco. Uh, my written testimony has citations, public sources detailing publicly available evidence of my complaints. I cannot support this applicant until they scale their closing hours back to midnight at a minimum, settle unpaid code violations issued by the city of Boston for commercial space, and prove life safety issues presented to the condo's residential owners, and work with the most impacted condo owners on um, building on quality of life issues. Code violations having been left unpaid for several years give me the impression that the applicant will not be a responsible holder of a liquor license. I recommend the board reject this application and direct the applicant to have true and open dialogue with other owners in the building. We have support in opposing the late hours from Chinatown Resident Association, Chinatown Resident Association, and several members of the Boston City Council. Uh, thank you for allowing me to address the board today. Thank you. The next hand we see raises from Elaine Tsang, and I would just like to reiterate from Chairman Joyce, if you have already submitted written testimony, please just state your name and address for the record. We have already received the written testimony if you've submitted it. Elaine Tsang, uh, you may unmute yourself. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Elaine Tsang. I live right on Hudson Street. I've been a longtime resident. And um, I am in support of the um, Ken and Kathy coming back into Chinatown um, to support us because as I've been going to this restaurant since I was a young girl with my family, I've also seen how the late, late, late night hours with the liquor license didn't bother anybody. They were actually very respectful of the, of the neighborhood. I don't know what other businesses you would want to be in that space, considering we all live in Chinatown and we know the climate um, and the environment. I would love to have a restaurant that is respectful to the neighborhood. Um, I moved into Chinatown because of the convenience. <laughs> um, Chinese culture, we all eat late. We all eat big meals with families. Everybody work. Nobody can come out to have family dinners at 7, 7 p.m. Not everybody can. And so that's why we have Chinese restaurants that you know, support late hours and take out and everything. I have two small children. I need late takeout. I'm just saying we live in Chinatown. We're talking about pest control. That's a city problem. It's not chi just Chinatown, it's not because it's just restaurant. So we have to be mindful of what we're really saying here. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. The next hand I see raises from Jenny Wan. Yep, you may, go ahead. Uh, yes, uh, my name is Jenny Wan. Yeah, I am in um, totally support of Kathy and Ken coming back to Chinatown. I grew up in Chinatown on Havison Avenue, and I am currently working full time in uh, in Chinatown on Havison Avenue. So I have seen Chinatown a big difference um, given the pandemic. Right now, it's definitely like a ghost town, and we are so excited and so grateful for Kathy and Ken coming back to Chinatown and invest their uh, time and and money into this Chinatown and make Chinatown great uh, better. Uh, because a lot of, uh, given the pandemic, a lot of progression has closed down and they are willing to come back and invest um, to open back um, Jumbo Seafood, which is, was so famous back in the 90s. And we miss them so much. And uh, we, again, we're so grateful uh, for them to come back to Chinatown. And uh, so I am truly um, to support of them coming back. Thank you. Thank you. I see a hand raised from Stefano Monteroso. Are you able to unmute yourself this time? Yes, I am. Good uh, afternoon. Thank you. Uh, good morning. And thank you for allowing me to provide my opinion. I would uh, welcome uh, a Chinese restaurant in the location. I'm a resident of the building. I own uh, two units uh, on the last floor of the building. The reason why I particularly oppose uh, this application is because uh, the owner of the commercial space which is uh, the sister of Ken, is being uh, absolutely non-cooperative uh, with the resident uh, to allow a better uh, atmosphere and uh, a cooperation with us. Just to make an example, 
The restaurant has an exhaust vent system on the roof of the building. Currently, the condo rules reserve the use of the elevator and the staircase of the building to private residences. So the restaurant cannot use the elevator nor the staircase according to the condo rules to get to the top of the building. So they would not be able, if this is uh, the situation, to maintain the exhaust vent system, which is mandatory by, uh, by the law. Of course, they keep maintaining it because they violate the condo rules. We, all the residents are in favor of changing the condo rules, but the owner of the commercial space doesn't want to change the condo rules because she doesn't want to pay for the elevator and the staircase. So we have a restaurant that needs, must go to the roof, to the top, to the roof of the building, but they don't want to pay for the elevator and the staircase expenses. And they say, we don't want to pay because the condo rules say that we cannot use the, uh, the uh, elevator and the staircase. So it is really a paradox, but I think it proves how uncooperative the owner of the commercial space is uh, with uh, the resident of the, of, of the building. The residents of the association would welcome to have a restaurant, to have a restaurant and I can uh, uh, by these two people because uh, we have history, we have told that they are good, but we would like that before the license is granted, they show in reality that they are sincerely willing to cooperate with the residents of the building, to make life of the residents of the building better, starting from solve this issue about the exhaust vent system, which is mandatory by law. And uh, how can you maintain it if uh, the condo rule say that you cannot access the top of the building? Again, and again, everybody is willing to change the condo rules, except the owner of the commercial space and the owner of the commercial Mr. space as- a Mr. Monterosso, I'm just gonna jump in and ask that you continue that conversation with the condo owner off uh, not while we're on the hearing. I appreciate, I get the gist of your comments um, in general, but it sounds like that Thank is you. a more detailed conversation for a different group of people. Thank you. Thank you. I do see one more hand raised from Jaro Saval. Uh, apologies if I mispronounced that. Yeah, that's fine, no problem. Um, I also live at above the restaurant and I think, um, and I know Stefano and I think what he's, the, the issue with um, the ownership is that we, we just have a terribly checkered past with the owner of the commercial space and the owner of the commercial space is related to the management company. So they're very, you know, they're that, kind of going- That was clear, that yeah, was clear so, for the previous person. Okay, yeah. so um, why, why just we're opposing this is because the restaurant has been managed so poorly that there's no, it's hard to imagine that they will manage a liquor license appropriately, especially with having such long hours. Um, we have been trying to talk to as many city officials and been trying to take in part in lots of community dialogues about this. And something we keep hearing is that businesses should be partners of, their, of who they're around, of the, of the residents that they're near. And the idea that this restaurant has ever been a partner to their residents is, couldn't be farther than the truth. It's just never happened. Um, so um, there's a number of things that I, I can send and so they'll be documented. But uh, the most important thing for me is that this is a, this, there's families in this building, there's young children, and that the restaurant has shown a, a disregard for basic fire prevent, prevention rules, basic um, life safety issues. They've painted over heat sensors. They've removed so smoke alarms. Um, there's flammable materials that are kept close to their gas boiler. Um, Restaurant machinery is plugged in with like extension cord to extension cord to extension cord. Um, and so much so that uh, insurance applications for the entire building have been, have been denied by insurance companies because they see it as too much of a risk with the commercial space. Um, there, we realize that we're in a highly uh, dense area with them, um, you know, with restaurants, but there's just been such negligence with taking care of pests and taking and taking preventing workers from smoking in the building. Um, 
And I mean, there's their their exhaust system is so poorly maintained that my you can't see out of my back windows in my kitchen because they're covered in grease from the restaurant. So, um, if um, you know, we've even actually been encouraged by some city officials that like this could be a case study for business owners with a lot of weight behind them trying to steamroll over residents because we can't, you know, we, we're trying to do everything we can to welcome a restaurant that would play by the rules. And we just feel like we're getting pushed around by, by this business owner. Thank you. Thank you. The next hand I see raised is from Carol Seto, and then I see Gordon Wynn in the comments. Uh, yes, hi. Um, my name is Carol Seto. Um, I've been a longtime resident and property owner in Chinatown. And for the record, I wanted to show support of um, New Jumbo going back into Chinatown to re-establish the business. I understand some of the concerns that um, the residents upstairs has expressed, but um, the documentation will show that all those issues that was brought to the attention to the board, they are all related and caused by the previous business owner. And since you know, Kathy and Ken, they had prior successful business already established in the, the same location before the last business owner was um, running the operations. It showed that you know, there was a very um, sincere and conscientious effort that they are gonna do the right thing going forward. And um, I am also the trustee of the condo association. So I'll be able to oversee the effort and make sure everything is gonna be uh, handled correctly according to the code, according to the licensing board, according to all the city's uh, rules and regulations. Thank you. Thank you, Gordon Wine. Good afternoon, Madam Chair and members of the board. My name is Gordon Wan, and I've been uh, a member of the Boston Chinatown community for over 50 years, especially in today's environment. My community of Chinatown desperately needs Kathy and Ken back. They will make a tremendous impact to the community in creating jobs, and they have a fantastic track record. In addition, I fully support the 2 a.m license for them. My family and I have always enjoyed coming to Chinatown for wonderful dinners after work, late night. And, you know, after nine o'clock at night, it's, I've never seen this in my life. It's a ghost town as Kirk and Jenny has mentioned. So in part of this, I fully support and endorse Kathy and Ken to come back to make a difference and add value. Thank you for this opportunity and God bless. Thank you. I do not see any further hands raised or anyone signed up to chat. Last call. Is there anybody else who has not yet testified on this matter who wishes to do so? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you, everybody. Thank Calling you. item 26, Obverse LLC, doing business as Cafe Sauvage, located at 25 Massachusetts Avenue, has applied for a common vigil or seven-day wines and malt beverages with liqueurs license to be exercised on the above. The entire first floor, approximately 1,000 square feet of 25 Mass Ave, seating capacity 38, including the basement area immediately con connected to the leased premise by a staircase. Manager Lunis Peter, closing time 12 a.m., attorney Andrew Upton. Attorney Upton. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, given the late hour, <laughs> I will attempt to combine speed and precision wow. in so my- So the guy, oh, one of the guys. In my presentation, and I've asked our supporters to do the same. Thank uh, you. You, you can see, hopefully on your screen, at, at, on mine, it's the, uh, the three people in the bottom. Uh, two are the owners, Antoine and Anais. Uh, and to the left in the white t-shirt is the proposed manager of record. That's Lunas Peter. He is a mass resident, a US citizen. He has considerable experience serving and bartending in French restaurants in Boston. Uh, and he's familiar with the rules and regulations of the board. Uh, Cafe Sauvage is Boston's first and only multicultural French bistro. They combine French bistro cuisine with African, Asian, and continental influences, much as you might see in a modern bistro in Paris today. Uh, they're owned by Antoine and Anais. They are a husband and wife team. Uh, they have worked in some French restaurants uh, here in Boston, 
and in other locations. They have a lot of experience. This is their dream restaurant, which they have opened about six months ago in the uh, space formerly occupied by a Chinese restaurant that went out of business. Uh, so their character and fitness to hold the license is strong. They've worked at Frenchie and Colette, two of the top uh, French restaurants in Boston. It has been their dream to own this place. They took a chance. They opened during COVID. This is a 1,000 square foot restaurant. Uh, it's not a big place. It's not a rowdy place. It's a neighborhood place. They have 13 tables, five seats at the bar. Uh, they've agreed with the Neighbors Association of the Back Bay to close at midnight. Um, they've had a clean and successful operation so far. They've had some great newspaper reviews, which we have submitted to the board for the record, and business has been slowly building. Uh, the public need, as you know, combines the appropriateness of a license at this location, along with the public want and the public sentiment. Uh, I believe there's little doubt that French bistro food is an appropriate location for the service of wine, beer, and cordials. Uh, this is a small place. It is a neighborhood place. It has a diverse ownership. It has become increasingly popular with neighbors, certainly not a chain of any kind. Uh, and beer, wine, and cordials would be the perfect match for the type of food they serve. Uh, as importantly, the neighborhood is in strong support. We have met with NAB. Uh, we have their non-opposition. Uh, we've agreed with them to close at midnight. Uh, we have several letters of support which have been submitted. We have what is a personal record that I've seen over 1,200 signatures on a petition, uh, many with favorable comments, both in English and French. Uh, so I believe the intent of the discretionary licenses that the board uh, may have at certain times to issue uh, is matched by this applicant. I mean, we are talking about economic development. We're talking about a small, unique operation. We're talking about diverse ownership with a husband and wife team. And we are talking about public need, uh, writ large and at an extraordinary level. Um, they're looking for beer, wine and cordials only. Uh, as you can see, we have in the thousands of supporters and as far as I know, no opposition thus far. Uh, and with that, we're glad to answer any questions. Thank you, Attorney Epton. Thank you for laying out the elements of the manager of record and for describing the public need. I'm gonna to turn to Commissioner Curran and Commissioner Saxon to see if they have any questions for you at this time. I do not, thank you. I do not, thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Yes. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Molly Griffin from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Um, to reiterate what Attorney Upton just mentioned, they have received a vote of non-opposition from the Neighborhood Association of the Back Bay. Um, I have not received any opposition from the neighbors at this point. Um, I've received a few letters of support um, from the neighbors as well, and I have no concerns. So thank you. Oh, we defer to the board at this time, sorry. Thank you. Are there any other elected officials or other representatives who would like to testify on this matter before we turn to general testimony? Great, the first uh, uh, testifier that has signed up is Nia Grace. Ms. Grace, you may unmute yourself. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is uh, Nia Grace. I'm the owner and operator of Daryl's Corner Bar and Kitchen, the Underground Cafe and Lounge, and co-founder of the Boston Black Hospitality Coalition. I am speaking in support of Cafe Sauvage's application for a seven-day wine, malt, beverage, and liquor license uh, with the personal understanding that liquor licenses positively affect an operator's bottom line, and it increases their chance for success. The menu enhancement will uh, definitely help to increase check averages by at least 25%. It will allow the operators to offer another product with a better profit margin. It will keep the operation competitive in a highly saturated restaurant market, thus again, giving them a true chance of success. I think that the public need is um, for entrepreneurs to be successful and this increases that. Thank you. Thank you. The next uh, hand I see raised is from Conrad Armstrong. Hi everyone, um, Connor Armstrong from 439 Marlborough Street representing the Neighborhood Association of Back Bay. Uh, the applicant met with us in December. 
Uh, they agreed to a midnight closing time, so the Neighborhood Association does not oppose them. Good luck. Thank you. The next hand I see raises from Mary Amavpour. Hi, hello. I just wanted to give my support. I'm a local um, founder and CEO here in Boston. My startup wave was actually featured on the front page of the Boston Globe this summer, and I live right next to Cafe Sauvage, and I just want to say how great it's already been for the neighborhood. I've met friends there. I've had great meals there. I've had investor meetings there. Um, I think they've already made actually such a big impact on the, um, the community. And um, I think that, you know, getting this license would only um, help them reach that potential and help them do so much better. So I'm in full support and I, I think they're just a great addition to the neighborhood. Thank you. The next person I see signed up to speak as from someone who wrote in the chat there, just from iPhone. Um, if you could please uh, unmute yourself and identify yourself. Hi, my name is Chris Haynes. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Yeah, I'm so sorry I'm not on video, but I've been on a while and traveling. Um, I just live up the street, uh, not far from the restaurant, and I just don't have anything other than definition of uh, praise to say for, for them. I got to live in Paris for a short term, and this is literally like going to Paris. It's a cultural experience. Everybody's speaking French, and uh, obviously a French uh, restaurant without wine is criminal, and um, I just think... Um, it's a necessary thing. And I just wanted to, as a neighbor since the nineties to uh, give my support. And I've been going there for uh, professionally and with friends and it's just such a special place. And the enthusiasm in the neighborhood is, is uh, very excited. That's all. Thank you. And the final person who I see signed up to speak is Sandrine Rossi. Yes, hi, um, so my name is Sandrine Rossi. I'm an immediate neighbor of Cafe Sauvage. I live 31 Massachusetts Avenue. And it happens I'm the former boss of Antoine and Anaïs. Uh, and I still work with Lunis. And uh, so I've known them for five years. And I know they're very professional and dedicated to their community. They've always taken good care of my restaurants. I have no complaints to make. And as a neighbor, which is very lucky, uh, I'm extremely happy that Cafe Sauvage is here. My husband and my 18 months old daughter go there almost every week, sometimes several times a week because uh, it has a strong impact on the neighborhood. Uh, it's a very um, community-based space and a great place together with other people. Yes, I, I submitted a letter so you can have my whole testimony in the letter. <laughs> Thank you very much. And I see it some uh, Bianca has just signed up to speak. Uh, Bianca, if you could please unmute and identify yourself. Hello, my name is Bianca. Um, and I'm just here because I would like to voice my support for Cafe Sauvage's petition as well for this license. Um, I feel that Cafe Sauvage brings something really beautiful to this area, this particular part of Back Bay. Um, and as a French and black owned restaurant, they have brought a new concept and energy to the area that as a resident, I have really wished we had for a very long time. So I'm very happy that they're here. Um, and I just want to say that in order for them to be successful as um, a small business, I think that this license is incredibly important. Um, and yes, uh, that's the end of my um, <laughs> speech. Thank you. I don't see any further hands raised or anyone else signed up to chat. Just last call. Is there anyone else who has not yet testified who would like to provide testimony on this matter? Great. Uh, with seeing no further testimony, the board will take this matter under advisement. Now Merci calling. Beaucoup. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Now calling the final item on today's agenda, number 27, Jellos Corp, doing business as Las Delicias Colombianas 2, located at 1231 River Street in Hyde Park, has applied for a common victor seven day wines and malt beverages with liqueurs license to be exercised on the above. Premise contains one floor, approximately 850 square feet. One kitchen seating capacity for 45, two bathrooms, one entrance exit. Manager Miguel Angel Gallego, closing time 11 p.m. Who is present on behalf of the applicant? This is me. How are you? Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Miguel Gallego. Uh, I'm applying for the communal voucher for seven days beer and wine and my beverage. This is my third time applying. Uh, this, the second time we've been approved. Uh, it was no license available, but this is the third, probably the, 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 the one that we need. Uh, we've been open and, uh, uh, and we had 35 seats. Uh, I'm a citizen of 
United States. I'm a resident of Massachusetts for the last 17 years. Uh, 16 years working in the kitchens, bar, bartenders. Uh, I gave my bartender class last, last couple months ago. Uh, I know all the rules about uh, liquor and selling alcohol. And uh, for now, we try to open 11, but because the COVID and because you know, we don't have more like liquor license, we've been closing by 8 p.m. So we need this close on the business, not just for me and my family, just for the people, my employees, and for all community of High Park. I love High Park, so I appreciate it. I'm open for any questions. Miguel, thank you so much for joining us again and for being so patient on this hearing. I do remember yes. your previous appearances before us. Um, it seems like this is sadly you're before us for the third time and you already know which questions we're gonna ask. Um, so thank you for covering your own manager of record questions. Um, and um, I'm not gonna, there's not much time, not much point right now in commenting on the status of licenses in the city. We always need more for, for small business, business people like you. Um, I'm gonna ask Commissioner Saxon and Commissioner Curran if they have any questions for Miguel today. Any questions, thank you. I do not, thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Hi, good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. This is Danielle Fonseca with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Um, we met, excuse me, Miguel connected with immediate neighbors, um, businesses in High Park Main Streets um, months ago uh, before we had met with the board previously. Um, he has been in this business as a manager for over four years and the owner of a restaurant uh, for almost a year. His goal is to bring more business to High Park and continue to offer a family friendly environment during the community outreach process. In addition to connecting with the Butters and Main Streets, he informed community stakeholders and neighborhood associations in the area. Um, this proposal has received several written letters of uh, support and phone calls expressing support for the restaurant. Um, we hosted in a Butters meeting back in July, it was July 13th, where many residents um, just express how passionate Miguel is, caring and responsible business owner. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter today? I see a hand raised from Tian Simpson. Hello, my name is Tian Simpson. I am a resident of High Park uh, for 24 years, and I want to let the board know that um, as a High Park resident and working in High Park as executive director for High Park Main Street, we know that Miguel is very responsible business owner. He's very um, giving. Uh, he's involved with the community. And uh, we love his family style restaurant. And so anything that can support him um, Going through this, you know, pandemic time, he, uh, our small business are struggling, especially our restaurants. So if the board will continue their support for him to get a liquor license, we would appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this matter under advisement. And those are all the items before the board today. Thank you everybody for your patience and for hanging in with us. And thank you everybody. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.